Let the bass kick. Big. What up? What up? What up? What is going down? What live on what? Hey, well, we're not live. I'm recording live. We are from recording somewhere. Uh, we are Sapphire Lounge. We are in the Sapphire Lounge. Welcome back to the Last Cash Podcast. I am Will. To my right, your something is Marcus. Hello. On the screen somewhere. We got the infamous Doctor Details. I'm listening. He's listening way over there. And we also have Jay Skinner. Say what up, Jay. Boom. And joining us tonight, our very special guest. Been excited for this one. Another one that we've been uh, hat, trying to make happen for a really long time. Greg Clement, a.k.a. Farm Fresh, a.k.a. Egg Boy, a.k.a. Eggland's Best, a.k.a. Egghead, a.k.a. Everybody's Favorite Turd. <laughs> I think what that's up, where buddy? we got to start is the egg stuff. I'm, where did that come from? I'm missing the oh, Eggland or Egg Boy. Oh, yeah. or well, Eggland is the course. We can't jump right into the deep end. Like, you know how to. Yeah. You can't just yeah, jump can. in the oh, ring because you think you can. Cannonball! Yeah, why, can't, why can't we? Well, because we got to exchange pleasantries first. Oh. Hi. How are you, Will? How have we you haven't been, been pleasant since 2019. Did you have a good afternoon? Nothing pleasant here. Yeah. <laughs> it's um, pouring down rain. I drove 45 miles an hour in the interstate all the way here. Just it's for good. you guys. It's good stuff. <laughs> we love you, Jay. I know, and I actually tried to leave left or uh, tried to leave on time today, so I wouldn't be late. And guess what? Still late. It's all good. Yeah, it is Monday, August thirty first, twenty twenty, and this is episode three of the Last Cash Podcast. Greg Clement is here. We're very excited. I want to give a couple quick shout outs. We got a, kind of an exciting day today. Um, happy birthday to Jeff Casalina, friend of the podcast. Happy birthday to club member Zach Beard, or possibly his better half, because he's one of those guys that has a shared Facebook account. So one of them has a birthday today. Awesome. Um, happy birthday to Caleb Jones, Pizzle's kid, JP's son. Oh, it's his, right, uh, right. I think I think he's like 21 now. I think 21? I think oh, it's dangerous. 22. 22. 22. Okay. Well, he so got, not hey, so dangerous. He's, learned, he's learned some lessons. Yeah. He got through 21. That's, um, that's a big one. Congratulations to the new arrival, um, to Jeremy and Wendy Rusco at Dynamic Disc. Yeah, yeah. They just had their first child, and also today is their 12th anniversary. So Do happy we anniversary. Snap that or snap it? We snap that. All right. Call snaps. And uh, what ha- was the name? Uh, it's, I think it's like Hampton. I was going to say Heiser. I was going to guess Heiser. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, there's like a sports theme, like not disc golf, but sports theme. To their their naming of their children because Starlin the bulldog named after a yeah. famous Cubs player. Yeah. This so. is their this is their first child, right? Yeah, and you're too far away from your mic. It's like way down below your chin. It just looks that way because of the angle. You see, you're barely halfway there, and you already sound better. I, I will. <laughs> hey, anyway, that's their first child, right? Yes. All right, first child, and it's a boy. And congratulations to them. I could be way off base. I just, I, you know, I'm happy for them. It was on Facebook, so that means it's, it's public true. knowledge. Yep. And uh, also, happy anniversary to Eric and Tina Oakley. Also, our homies. That's all I wanted to say. I did see that post as well. Yeah. Yeah, so I think if you go on Facebook, and that's official, like, hey, you want the world to know. Yeah. What you got? You're clapping over there. Egg right? boy. Egg fresh. <laughs> Whoa. Farm boy. Whoa. <laughs> Tell us the story. I, I got to know. Hold on. Because the, 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 the first time I heard know. the first time I heard about you, they were like, Oh, that's Farm Fresh. And I was like, where's Greg Clement? Where is Gregory Clement? And they're like, Don't worry about who that is. But I'm under the impression that he's not the biggest fan of of the Egg Boy nickname. Is this correct? Me? Yeah, you. No, no, no. Man. He signs up as that at Terminant. Maybe you just had a bad day the first time I ever met you. Maybe it was your fault. Well, Johnny B was like, go over there there and call him Egg Boy. And so I was like, hey, it's Egg Boy. And you were like, Farm Fresh. That was wow. That was me. That was you. Lord have whoa, mercy. whoa. That was you. That was you, buddy. But, yeah, like I said, you may have had a bad day. And you didn't know me. That was like when I first started, so a little while ago. But anyway, where did the egg come from? Back in the day, uh, we used to play for 12 packs at Seven Oaks. No, this was 
I'm assuming you're talking beer, not eggs. 12 packs of Coca Colas. Coca Colas. Coca Colas. Pull that mic a little closer to you. No, you and don't have to move. Just pull the mic a little closer. Yeah, he needs to move. You get yeah. comfortable, bring the mic to you. And this was Bonehead oh. and Red that we were playing against. So they, they were already nicknamed. Shout out to Bonehead. I don't know if he still listens to stuff like this. Or Who is Bonehead? God dang. He's like, you I would ask that question. Name. He's like, I don't know his name. Yeah, I do, but now that, I, now that now I'm that on the you spot. Ask me. Good Lord. Dang anyway. It, Jay. Well, you know, <laughs> every good nickname's got a real name somewhere. I'll think of it here in a minute. We would play for 12 packs. and I, I lived in the country, and it was the uh, the McDonald's commercials where the guys were going to the Super Bowl, and it was the Farm Fresh Egg McMuffins. <laughs> nice. And, so, and it just, you know, it, the, you know how the days go at Seven Oaks. You're sitting mm-hmm. around hanging out and stuff, and it, that nickname evolved into Farm Fresh Egg Boy. All right. See, I, I know that like... Steve Bradley. There you go. Steve, Steve, Steve Bradley. Bradley. Shout out All to right. Steve Bradley. I was going to say McDonald uses the word Farm Fresh very loosely. Yeah. <laughs> I don't remember them ever having anything Farm yeah, it's Fresh. It's pretty frozen and like just yeah. shaped, but... Uh, it's gotten worse. You could probably make it higher. Year year. <laughs> yeah. You, or make it last a year if you just left it out. Yeah. But I, I always kind of assumed, <laughs> Greg, because before I actually like knew you very well... Um, I thought maybe, and before I knew you had like, I knew what your occupation was. I thought that quite possibly you're, you were behind the whole, like all the eggs you see in Kroger that say egg lands best farm <laughs> fresh and all that stuff. I was like, maybe that's his family's farm. I don't, dairy. I don't even know. That's pretty cool though. Um, but like all disc golf nicknames, people doing dumb stuff and saying dumb things. And mm, they, they but get, it must have hit they home get thrown at you and they egg stick. land. It, and you can thank Steve Hardy for the Eggland name. He he was the one that he's the one okay. that came about. Dang, Steve the great Hardy. Steve Hardy. He's everywhere, man. He is. When, when did Eggland come about? I guess it was after the nickname. Uh, before that, it was Chigger Ridge, but then uh, Chigger uh, Ridge uh, for 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 some unknown reason. It's still a damn ridge. I don't know about. I don't have. Oh, there used Chiggers to be Chiggers out there. I watched that happen one time in a basketball game. A referee was doing somebody terrible. Somebody was digging in somebody's yard? No. Well, like the same principle. <laughs> referee was doing <laughs> terrible, and some dude from the stands was like, you're awful. And the referee took his jersey off. It's like, you want to do it? Dude went down there and took his jersey and ref the rest of the game. No Straight way. up. Yeah, he did. Wow. Wow. I was like, it's a real nice display of sportsmanship. Pops. Everybody's like that hockey player. That was the day I chose not, really not to. Player. He was like the guy. like um, Tell people he was he my was, dad. Um, a janitor or something, and they ran out of um, yeah. uh, goalies, and he had to like jump in from being a janitor and goalie, and he's fucking like bombed. Like he he did great, yeah, he did amazing. Yeah. And then like the next day, the uh, NHL was like, no, we're not gonna do that anymore. <laughs> we're gonna have like three or four people on the sideline just in case <laughs> just because in case. Yeah. we don't want people coming from the janitors coming up. Yeah, and, like, like disgrace. Oh, this is hockey. The are making janitor millions can do this? of dollars playing this sport. This guy's been like. He's like Wiping, wiping floors and using the Zamboni machine. Hey, he right? plays hard at Zamboni, Zamboni League, bro. Zamboni. And Zamboni. And he's like, yeah. just like, hey, you know what? I'll come in. And I'll, I'll, I'll defend. And these guys, yeah, I got this. I he's got the, this. I'm like, whoa. He's that's the guy awesome. at Rec that's League amazing. who takes it way too serious. That's not that great. <laughs> <laughs> you're not that great if that happens, okay? You're a little, or maybe it's just easier than here. it looks. Look Target off. there. I thought I was talking way I too loud. I can't hear your beautiful voice clearly, Marcus. I thought I was talking too loud. No, you're, you're just, perfect now. You don't have your yeah, mic. Or you don't have your headset on, so you can't try to turn you up. Yeah, yeah that's what the headphones are for, dude. Got nothing. To so see. we just had uh, the annual Seven Oaks work party this weekend. True that. And I don't know how many annual work parties. That's got to be more than thirty. He's got three books. He said. Yeah. About people's names. So. Yeah. So that's a lot. It was awesome. There's about I think overall probably around fifty people. All together between both days. We got a lot done. Set new ties, spread gravel, a awesome. bunch of weed eating, uh, fallen tree removal, all sorts of good stuff. And uh, thank you to everybody that came out and helped. And thank you to Dave Griffin for 20 plus years of dedicated service to Seven Oaks Golf Snaps. And, uh, Shout out Griffin. Somebody get that man a hammock. And the largest <laughs> and lemonade you can find. Yep, one of those drinks with the funny little umbrellas in yeah, it. Yeah, that man deserves it. Retirement. Well, it's a mustache and, wax. It's going to be <laughs> it's awesome. A mustache wax. <laughs> yeah, yeah absolutely. Must, 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 <laughs> yes. Yeah. <laughs> it's going to be awesome to see him showing up at stuff just to play. I'm really excited oh, yeah. for that. And um, also want to shout out to Brian Henry, my homie, for uh, getting the 2020 Seven Oaks Volunteer of the Year Award. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And everything that he's done to help out at Seven Oaks. Freaking awesome. We love you, dude. He's certified good people. Yeah, he is. He's hardcore good people. Like, you know, core group good people. 
So it was a big success. I did something to my left hand, and I'll tell you, it could have been at the work party at Seven Oaks on Saturday, or it could have been at the work party at my house on Sunday, but I did something to the thumb area in the base of my Eat. hand right here. Now you can see it right That's, in here. It's a little swollen. And it, you never realize like how much stuff you actually do with your off hand until it, it hurts hurt. like hell to do anything with your off hand. Yeah. And I've been wearing a funky brace all day at work. It hasn't helped. Ripping TVs off the wall and stuff. What's crazy, though, is how many times have we been on a course working or building courses and you get hurt, like, at the at the work party, I don't know how many years, seven years down the road? Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. That's not. That's a good run. That's a good run. Um. So, yeah, uh, that was my Sunday experience. Did some weed eating, hurt my hand, wore a brace, looked like a dork all day at work. Um, but, no, we uh, it was a, it was an awesome time and uh, you know it's always like a family reunion out there for the work party but yes thank you to Dave Griffin and that was really all we had going on this weekend there were some tournaments elsewhere, elsewhere but most mm-hmm. of the the pros there's not really a whole lot of well we had some CBS sports coverage yeah, we yeah, did have the CBS uh, and we're gonna get to that for that. sure that's that but was big this week as far as tournaments go everybody's quarantining for two weeks so, so they can go to Vermont and compete at Smugglers sure well, well, there were some I guess signature wins yeah by a couple people yeah. I was going to say, weekend, ho- go for it. Brody Smith took down a B tier in what? Oklahoma, or he shot a 1024. I believe it was Oklahoma. A 1029. That, that wreck career is getting pretty serious. But he was, he had an announcement on Instagram about he wasn't playing any more big tournaments this year. He was what? going back home. So Well, well B tier is kind of. Yeah, I mean, when you're, when you're well, talking I mean, about like you jumped right into the pro tour and the, the it, you know. Yeah. Let's be real here. Him jumping right into the pro tour, he didn't do half bad. No, man, absolutely not. And everybody, you know, haters gonna hate. But Brody Smith is great for disc golf, obviously. Yeah. And, and at the best time in a year when, like, we're already bringing in unprecedented numbers and unprecedented attention. Well, I'm, I know you heard the argument because everybody was like, some people were really pissed that he was there because they were just using disc golf to make money, using disc golf to make money. I'm I, like, I meanwhile, don't... they're like boosting the crap out of disc golf. Mm-hmm. So it was like, there's two sides to that story, sir. Well, I mean, he's got a sponsorship with Discraft. He's helping Paul with Foundation. And, sure. You know, he's he's plugged in. It's not just a flash in the pan. He's actually kind of going all in with this. And well, and he worked with, what, Lazat and a, f- a few others a, f- a couple of years previous. Yeah. On a couple, like, trick shot videos. Mm-hmm. So he's no stranger to the Simon sport. and Paul. Yeah. yeah, that's right. So uh, really cool to see uh, him get his first win. Snaps. I mean, that's going to bump his rating up. Sure. Bit, for sure. sure. It's rating higher than mine. Um, and then the other thing, what was the other thing? Uh, CBS Sports coverage. See, that was the other thing. So I will just come right out the gate and say I didn't get to watch it because my cable package apparently does not get CBS Sports Network. What? I tried, I tried all kinds of things. I I, uh, I, down, I downloaded the CBS Sports app and I signed up for a free trial of CBS All Access. Apparently that, that wasn't good enough. So, oh, wow. Canceled the free trial today. Have not got to see a lick of the coverage. I was also pretty busy over the last few days. I've got a DVR'd if you'd like to come to the house. I probably will. Day. I would probably take advantage of that. But sure. I know Dr. Hoy watched it. I know you probably watched it. Oh, yeah. I know I'm, I may be the only one in the room that hasn't watched it. I haven't watched it. Greg hasn't watched we it. We should have a watch party. Young I don't have cable. So, Greg, before we get Look into... It. Cause, <laughs> we're, we're, That's because he can't get cable yeah. where he lives. They don't run <laughs> it that far out. <laughs> well, since... Before we get into the opinions of the people that watched it, how big is it? I mean, like, you've been around. You joined the PDGA in 1995. He is PDGA 9798. 9798. Under yeah. the 10. Wow, well, you already got it. Pulled Found up. it. That's awesome. Verified. Right confirmed. N- do not need to retract that on episode four. 94. That's awesome. Wow. 94. And well, he played like, his first events in 94. I yeah, think 94. he was PDGA current for the first time in 95, correct? Uh, you better get six more in pretty question. quick, bro. Well, yeah. yeah. I need and that also hundred. Notice in 94, year. they didn't do ratings. I'm gonna need that hundred hundred event this year, sir. Oh, for that event, six more this year. Let's get it done. No, ninety five either. Ninety four is what they're saying. You probably have no. more than that technically. No, they're saying it started. Well, he was playing an intermediate in ninety four with oh, John Zimmer and Mike. <laughs> I thought Thompson. you were saying he had ninety four well, no, no, events. No, it's cool. It's cool if you look at it. Like, intermediate full life. How many events? Check it out. It's like intermediate, intermediate, advanced, advanced, and by the end of the year, he's pro. Yeah. Like I, I love that. I, I was checking it out. I was like, "Oh, that's oh, huh? okay." He's like stepping <laughs> this game up. Like his first thing, the first uh, tournament was like twenty second. Or were they his throwing in ninety five? And then like next year he was like twenty second. 
And then by the end of the year, he was like sixth in pro open. I was like, whoa, <laughs> you just went from like literally like intermediate. See, like, look at this dude. And then he's like playing pro open. I'm like, what the? That's yep. awesome. You advanced really quickly. He's well, a and then 95, you moved up to advanced and you won. What was it that he won in 95? Let's go back and see. That, that Lexington tournament. The more birdies. It was something. I think it was the Maxi Pad Open. <laughs> uh, Cedar Safari. Yep, the Cedar, Cedar Safari. Safari. Yeah. Oh. So you got your your you moved up to advanced, advanced in '95, and you mm-hmm. won the Cedar Safari, and you also got some decent placings on other events that year. I think at the Nashville Open you were 11th place, seventh place at the Horst uh, the Horton Solstice Chill Out. Well, that's a mouthful. They should that bring it tor- back. Tor- 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 Horton Solstice chill out but man you've been playing disc golf longer than most of our new members this year have been alive uh real quick how many events total he has been um looks like career events 167 167 167. wow so you've seen a lot of trends come and go you've seen a lot of players a lot of tournament directors a lot of promotions a lot of rules You've seen a lot of things, the technology of the equipment. You've seen a lot of things change since you started playing disc golf. Mm-hmm. What is it like to you to see a major sports network covering a disc golf Oh, it's event? fantastic. But what are your thoughts on that? Because I know, like, they're saying, you know, this is the first time in, in, the, in history that disc golf has been broadcast on a major network. But, you know, there was all the stuff that happened at the Rose Bowl, like, back in the late 80s and early 90s yeah. and stuff, too. A little so. bit before me, though, the Rose Bowl stuff. Yeah, but I'm saying, you know, there was CBS involvement then. There was the Ocho, huh? though. Yeah. It was the there Ocho. was the ESPN yeah. experience. Before you answer that, what was the hot disc in 95? 95. Eagles? The driver? Or just any. What was the hot disc back then? The Cyclone. ABRs. Oh, ABRs, yeah. ABRs and Rocks. Oh, okay. <laughs> I, I, I was going to say, like, what's a hot disc right now? ABR driver. I was, I was 10 rock. years old. I was old. ABR driver back then. was just like, 10. Was go-to, I was right? 10 <laughs> yeah. in 95. Well, I mean, what else? I was 12. A Shark. ABR Shark. Yeah. I mean, when I first started, ABR Shark. Uh, mm-hmm. Eclipse. Mm. Eclipse. There you go. The Blowfly. Right, so, tell me this. So, <laughs> that was later. The Rock obviously came out before the Shark, right? Mm. I think yes. Okay. Yes. So when the shark came out and it had that extra little like bevel around the rim, was that like, oh my god, or what? What was that all about? I don't. Because like when you feel disc and you feel mid range disc and you get like a shark in your hand, you can tell there's like an extra there's little, that little yeah. notch on it. No, notch on it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I never did. Uh, when I started playing, there was already the rock and the shark, so I didn't. Mm-hmm. I didn't yeah. notice a big. It wasn't like I, I noticed yeah. a big difference between the two. I'm a big shark fan. <laughs> yeah, I remember. I remember when shark. I first. Through the shark, I was like, "Oh wow, that's you can throw that where you want to throw it," yeah. know, as opposed to you know dumping out mm-hmm. hyzer and stuff. Hmm. Yeah, big fan. So back to Will's question. I didn't mean to take away from it because it was a great question. I was just curious about that disc. Before no, we yeah, I was it. just I was just saying, what, you know, your it, do you have any thoughts like specifically like what it's like to? I mean, you know, it, it's obviously we're in a day and age now where back then. Like in 95, 96, 97, as long as people have talked about having ESPN or major sports network coverage of disc golf, TV was a much bigger deal back then. Now, you know, hardly anybody, like the ratings on anything that's broadcast on television, oh, if it doesn't waiting. have an, a, a, a digital online counterpart, they're, you know, yeah. infinitesimal. But, um, you know, but, yeah, what are your thoughts? I, I think it's great. When you were talking about Brody, I think, I think that's great. I mean, if, if, uh, People want to watch it, watch it. And I think it's great for the sport to, you know, to grow the sport and what, you know, that's, you know, everybody says that. And I think it's great, but I don't, I don't, I don't begrudge Brody getting in there. And if he can, if he, if, if he can back it up by people paying him money to do it, you know, do it. I think it's great. Well, maybe not Brody per se, but just the, the CBS being involved. What's, what's your take on that? No. Yes. Are, are you give me more I mean, disc golf? I know a lot of times a sentiment that I seem to get or, or, maybe feel more than is expressed by people that have been playing a lot longer than I have is that mainstream exposure, mainstream coverage. Like there's a, there's a little bit of like a, like it's uh, like bittersweet. Like it's like, yes, this is, it's good that it's going to be a, a, a legitimate mainstream sporting activity. But are we like, you know, do you feel like something, anything's being lost by that? Do you think, what what are your thoughts about seeing like because now you can't go to any course without seeing tons of new people with three discs in their hands just like checking it out um i mean like i think a lot of people feel like the spirit of disc golf is at risk by such a rapid period of growth but also 
you know, the benefits that we have experienced from disc golf are being experienced by more people. So we're stoked about that too. Steve Kearns is really who I'm thinking about right now because he always tells me, I love what you do, but I hate what you do because, you know, I see all these people out here having fun playing disc golf, but it's like, this used to be like our little secret, like our little thing. Sure. Well, I mean, and we know we all love disc golf. It's fun. It's, you know, it's what, you know, it's what we do, but, yeah. and if you're going to, you know, if you're going to put in more courses, you're going to have more people playing, more people are going to be out there. That's just, that's, that's the way it goes. And if, if, if you lose the spirit, it's your own fault. It's yeah. our fault. Yeah. Because, yeah. you know, if you don't, if the, if the new people come in there and they're tearing up the course and littering and tearing up baskets and stuff and nobody talk, takes them aside and says, look, you know, the city doesn't do this. We do this. You know, we, you, you know, we, as in, you, you know, if you're, if you're, if you're a new, if you're a new player, you're, you need to be with us. You, know? yeah. you don't need to be out here tearing stuff up. You know, you need to, if you see a can, pick it up, don't throw it in the trash can. So. Well, I think with the growth, you're going to see a lot of more, a lot, a lot of more, a lot more change. I think you're going to see a lot. lot, of lot, of more, lot of with that growth, you're going to see a lot of companies, a lot of courses, a lot of course designers grow with that change, and then obviously with that change, you're going to see the sport evolve into into better and bigger. I mean that one. Yeah. I mean it, it 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 does in one case kill the grassroots vibe because of corporate, but there's always going to be the grassroots vibe at your local place that you, you will never be able to take that away. So there's a lot of change that's going to happen, but it's going to be for the better. It's, it's going to grow the sport. It's going to make the sport better. And the little rough areas that the sport has, whether it be formatting or whether it be ratings or whether it be this or that, those areas will get smoothed out with that growth because it'll be, they'll be forced to change and evolve with the sport or get left behind. Cause that's yeah. where, that's where one it'll of, eventually go. One of the things I noticed was, there was a commercial um, hybrid between Rec Tech Grills and Disc Golf, and they've actually been the title sponsor of the WR Jackson. Um, I forgot the national tour. The basically the finale national tour oh, the event. Sportsplex. And so you're getting mainstream companies. I mean, I think that's one of the big things is getting mainstream companies as like when we start to see them as title sponsors well, instead of only disc graph or disc manufacturers is that, disc golf manufacturers i thought that was kind of maybe a local grill company was that is that a mainstream company because traeger Rectech. is like the one i know like the big like the it's almost the exact same style grill a little bit no different, it's a big but, like the wood pellets and the mm. i mean they were they're they're big i did pretty, I, pretty I big i mean i was just maybe. asking so, so they're a pretty big company then. That's yeah. good then. But I mean, then you also had the argument where people were saying on YouTube or Instagram, oh my gosh, you couldn't see every shot. Because, yeah, they had to change the format. They had to explain what a hyzer is. They had to you know, ex- break it down for people. And they even had Adam Zucker on there, one of the hosts of CBS Sports. He, if you watch a lot of college football, he was he had a basket in his backyard. He was putting, talking about it, how well, he plays. And, well, if you watch some yeah, old was, school disc golf DVDs, and it was on a BW3s. Adam Zucker's uh, commentator in a few of them. Like oh, I didn't know, he I did didn't disc know golf commentary back in the day. Yeah. And like if you watch him, it's like wow, he was just levels above some others. Yeah, yeah, he's and got not the not sports not at like Jeremy or voice. anybody who does it now, but just back then he was just so far. They had above big anybody. sexy commentary on there, and they were dude. Had they professional. They had the CBS Sports shirts on, and they were explaining, and they were they had you know some joking. I mean, it wasn't like completely because we were like, oh, they didn't get to say their normal stuff, but they had to explain a little bit more. So to everybody, people so. people got upset, and I heard, I saw that too, where they were upset because you didn't get to see every shot from every you know the follow and where it landed I, and all this other stuff. But hey, here's here's the deal. CBS, when you watch real or traditional golf, I like your thing for it, traditional golf, you don't watch them shoot every shot. They shoot a shot and then they bounce over to hole eight or bounce over to hole seven or whatever it may be. Do you know how much better that is for our sport? Because now it's not just going to be the top eight people, ten people who you see all the time on the top two cars and lead and chase card coverage. You're going to start seeing – Maybe not the best guy ever, but you're going to start seeing these people, these other pros who are are good and great, who play great golf, and they're just going to allow them to build fan fan bases. Or maybe like now you where you I mean? look at scores after the event and you're like, where'd this guy come from? Who the hell is this? Oh, Well, you were tuning into the live coverage and you, you got a chance to see an epic moment that he had, and you know his name now. Sure. So when you see his name on a leaderboard, you're like, oh, dang, he's really, he's really pushing. Yeah. 
Do you watch a lot of coverage, Greg? Like, do you watch any of the Jomez or oh, yeah, Central Coast? You watch I, a lot of that? Yeah, I'd watch Zero TV and disc all, golf everything on, my on phone. the internet. Yeah. 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 So, well, the big. I've the, seen all the disc golf. <laughs> my thing, and obviously, I'm sure this isn't the case with the CBS coverage. I'm not going to assume anything because I haven't had a chance to watch it. But, and, and with Jomez, it's, you know, when you're talking about Nate and Germ, it's usually totally pristine. But a lot of, like, the big. I don't know if it's four or five media providers now because you've got Jomez, Central Coast, Gatekeeper Media, GK Pro. Those are the ones Foundation's that Foundation has been doing some stuff too, haven't they? What's that? F- Foundation's been doing some stuff Foundation's as well, Foundation's been doing some stuff. Par Save, Disc Golf Examiner, Ace Run Pro, uh, Howard Disc Golf, obviously. Like, we have our own local stuff. But, like, the one thing that I have really been bothered by is it's like you've got all this work and all this money and all this time and all this talent going into this really flashy, like well-packaged, shiny media coverage. It's got all the nice graphics. It's got all the stats popping up on the screen, and it's all this like really well-done stuff. And then you're listening to commentary that sounds like two guys were recording it talking into a tin can in a, in a phone booth in 1997. Yeah. Like, well, that's gotten better. Well, I mean, and that's the thing is like, just because I have experience with audio from doing what we've done, it's like, sure. I know that what's going on is basically you're sending the video to the two most interesting people that were at the event that you can think of, like the two, like highlight, like two of the highlight players sure. or the people that have the most following. And you're saying, Hey, record commentary over this. And they're recording it on whatever they have. And that's like, to me, it's almost like shooting yourself in the foot because it's like, I would rather, I like, I'm muting that. I don't want to, you know what I mean? And everybody talks so much about commentary as in like just what's being said and the style of it and who's who's there. And it's like... Uh, Audio quality is a big thing. But it's like so many of the videos from big events have this sure. just crazy, tinny, like tin can audio I'm, Yeah, commentary. they do. And, and I, like, it makes me wonder if they're, if they're recording off of the laptop mic. Yeah, to probably. make it easy. Laptop mics or phones or who yeah. knows what. I mean, like, but you, whenever well, you get a why chance. not like get like once you have the the first edit, you know, the graphics can be changed and whatever sure. updated after the fact. But while the people are there, if you've got like a sound stage that you can like get them in, like even if it's like in an RV and you can get them in front of some quality mics, sure, sure. like why not make the the effort to do that? Because to me, it's almost like wasting the coverage like sure. if, if i turn it on and i'm all excited and then it's like sure like i get that 100 percent. but then on the other side of that too commentary we're so used to jeremy and nate or jeremy and paul uleberry that everybody else is just yeah and, and it's coming from a guy that used for we like did commentary, last, and I can't even listen to it. It's so bad. Yeah, for the last year and a half of our podcast, or for the first year and a half it's of a our horrible. podcast, it was just Sorry, ladies. Terrible. We didn't mean to do so bad. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> it was our first time. We didn't know what we were doing. And that was like the third run-through, by the way. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> we had, but anyway, yeah. Go on, Will. Sorry about that. No, moving past that, it's just, you know, I think it's a big move for disc golf. And obviously, in a year where we're experiencing, like... More growth yeah. than ever before. It's it's well, huge. Well, what I was going to tell you to do, and big up to Jeremy Rusco for, for making leading the happen. charge on getting on the, the money on board to do that. And, Absolutely, yeah. It's well, been a big was, year for the Ruscos. Sure has. I was going to tell you, whenever you get a chance, come by the house and watch it because I think you'll be, you will be impressed because it's what coverage should be. Yeah. And and Nate and Jeremy straight up killed it. They were professional, but they still had just enough of their style to make it good. It I'm wasn't sure like the listening to a college professor from England talk. Yeah. It was actually really, really, really good. So I, I was pretty impressed with it. And the graphics, Chomez killed it with all the post production. Like I said, it, it's worth it just to see what they did with it. It's a whole, it, like, Chomez has always been here. Chomez. And with that, or Jomez, or however you say it. <laughs> They've always been top of the bar, like taking what they did. So you yeah, think it's, that they maybe set they want to learn something from CBS and uh, implement it themselves. Large quantities of money. I'd be interested to see their roster from from that tournament. Yeah, they because hired a they lot hired like twenty of extra people. And dude, let me and tell I'm you, I'm sure they didn't just hire random Joes off the street. I'm sure no. they hired people from the other media. Companies oh, they did like special Coast segments also. and player profiles and all sorts of different like neat little features. They had. Um, the Zucker guy from the backyard basket doing yeah. like mini commentary when they were coming back from breaks. It was. I was just thinking of the guy. It was really, really, really. The ad, the ad well. space guys. 
when they're like going to commercial. Check out the disc golf and find it on CBS Sports with disc golf. Like, oh, it was yeah. yeah was saying, it was like somebody had to go in there and redo yeah, that. I'm really excited quickly. that there's a third way to say like, it because like dynamic us, discs open. I say disc golf, and like anybody that started playing yeah. before 19 or 99, they usually say disc golf. Like they emphasize the disc in yeah. the disc golf. I'm like disc golf. To where when I say, oh, I play disc golf, somebody's like, did you say disco? Did you say disco? <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, it's like Ken you Folger. Mean? You hear him and, like, and, uh, you know, everybody will, will say disc golf. Like, it's, it, yeah. there was two different ways to say it. And you can kind of gauge, well, this guy's been around for, been around a flying disc for a while. The fourth way. I wanted to get popular uh, enough golf. where I can stop oh, that, riding yeah, the that disc. That's true. Or Frolf. Okay, five. No, no, if I have to no, ride it. No, no, I just want to ride no, the golf. If we're letting Frisbee <laughs> no, golf in, we got to let Frolf in. No, no Frisbee golf. Yes, no, Frolf is definitely out. I smack a hoe. <laughs> I don't know. I don't like that word, anyway, Frolf. Um, yeah, big stuff. I feel like we're kind of taking a lot of time to talk about that. Well, we got That's uh, what we're a here gold for, just to talk. Oh, I know. I, I, I just... Make I, love to the listener's ears. Well, yeah, that too, <laughs> but also to schmooze Greg a little bit because um, you're well, one of our smoozing. pioneers of, of disc golf in Nashville. And like, you know, we talked a little bit off the air, maybe a little bit on the air about where we're at as a club now. And it's like pushing 400 members. We got almost 600 people signed up for the Music City Open this year. 587, I believe I looked last night. I think. And we've got literally people on the wait list All on time. almost every division, I would assume. 32. Yeah. 30. Yeah. And. The club is exploding. We, we signed up probably 15 new members at our last bag tag. At um, event eight. <laughs> yeah, at event eight in the series this late in the year. So, But we would not, you know, and I, I've told this to, to Griff and to Ken and uh, to Hardy and everybody when we've had them on the show. It's like, you know, you guys all laid the foundation of that for us. Like, we, there's no way we would be able to be facilitating all this if it wasn't for the FDD and for the fact that you guys built the infrastructure and laid the stuff in the ground and like broke ground for disc golf in Nashville back in the day. And so now like Metro parks is, it's not a huge ask for us. We don't have to explain a whole lot. They already know about disc golf. You know what I mean? That's all thanks to you guys. We, you provided us with a very nice canvas and palette combination for us to start implementing new things and trying to keep up with the trends of the, the new digital age. So um, I'm really interested to know, like your personal story. I know you you're from Alabama, originally, and right. uh, how what led you to Nashville and how did disc golf ha- find you? Like how did you find disc golf? Well, I'm born in Alabama, but I grew up in Jackson, Tennessee. And, okay. Uh, we used to we actually played some disc golf in Jackson, Tennessee at the Muse Park. Muse, Muse Park, Park. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. But at the time, that was the old uh, Wisconsin cone baskets. If y'all, yeah, I've seen yep. those, if, man. If you haven't seen, they're that, loud. If you haven't seen, it, hit the Google and check it out. Uh, so we used to play the metal that. part in the middle. Right. Yeah. You don't, don't make many putts. Yeah. Upside down yeah. little cone. If you hit the top of the cone, bye. Horton had some of those for a little while, didn't they? They had a different style that had like a weird rounded top. No, that was oh, okay. the dome that. You, where they could have a light up in it. Yeah, ah, for yeah, yeah. Bring back the dome. But the, yeah, the, these cone baskets were no chains, no chains. So we'd play those with uh, with whammos. And, yeah. And we'd go to Lambeth University. and We played object golf. We didn't have a dedicated object course like Folger and uh, like they did at uh, Vanderbilt. Vanderbilt, yeah. But it was just a okay that statue in three or you know that back to that back to this tree in four. So I've you know I had ten thousand hours of frisbee before I found frisbee golf or disc golf i should say <laughs> watch your tone young man but i went to austin p and then met my wife up there and, and moved to white bluff but, but but before i moved there i would lived in Cullioka, tennessee down down near henry Horton. Cullioka bulldogs so i add in a newspaper or an art, article that? in the newspaper we played on in sport oh, sorry sorry no no you go ahead. goodness i yeah. can't stop myself no, seriously Joe. i just said coley oak and my bad and then you would just and then he went, went off the the asking questions and i was like oh, i'm obliged to answer now greg yes. just my man so, so, so our article in the paper for disc golf it showed the basket and i was like oh what the huh and you know because i still had frisbee still what is this what, wizard what is what what what, what am i wizardry. what am i to do with this and so i went and went and saw it and saw the show and said well i'm in Bought a, bought a Frisbee, bought a T-shirt, and I was in. So you went and watched an event, or you actually watched a disc golf show? 
it was disc golf. I called it the show. It was the it was the state tournament. It was okay. multiple multiple events, but I you know went to see the disc golf. But that's I didn't know if you meant like a demonstration or something somewhere. No, no, no. no, no it was the. It was, I call it the same thing. I, yeah, it was the show. It's time for show, it's show time. Show, show time. time. Show time. What time yeah. is it? Game so time. Henry Horton was the first course you played. Yes. First, okay. first time I saw the chains and. And that, you said Muse Park. Um, so, how long has Muse been in the ground that had those cone baskets? Oh. I don't know, man. That's that's. Is, I wonder is what the Muse history Park is on the that. main huge park in Jackson. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I mean, it's so super it. super ghetto now, but uh, well, over oh, by the fairgrounds, it's the one that has the 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 end of a basket. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, it's Tom Monroe sign. Yes. Yeah, it's interesting because, like, my dad and my uh, sisters were in Jackson for years and years while I was growing up. When oh, I would really? when I would go to visit my dad and my sisters when I was living in like, what Albuquerque or West Virginia or wherever I was at, I was always going to Jackson. So, a little history there in, in Jackson, and I've played Muse Park before, and that's cool. Um, so, you played Henry Horton for the first time, saw an article in the paper, and you hooked the first time you, you played? Oh, yeah, I was, I was already hooked. I just didn't know I didn't know it was a thing. You yeah, know, yeah. We already, I was already playing Frisbee golf. I didn't know about, I didn't know about golf courses and baskets. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, okay, you know, cool. Dedicated courses. I, did, I had no idea, you know. So your first year in the PDGA started off a little different than most. Is this correct? A little AM, and then by the end of it, pro? Intermediate. Intermediate, Intermediate. in 94. Played yep. a couple events in, in 94. And with uh, names that you guys all know, uh, John Zimmerer, Tuna Thompson, um, Ralph Moffitt. Ralph Moffitt, yeah. <laughs> don't know that guy. but I don't have the stats in front of me right now, but I remember looking at him earlier. And did you play with H.B. Hark? Uh not by choice. He did every once in a while. I'm just kidding. Yes, but he was usually he was always ahead of me. I guess you'd say. I I, I, I played wise? against HB, yeah, competitive and competitively and age wise. But I did play with him some in the some. Gotcha. Uh, some. Well, I bring it up mm-hmm. for one to toot your horn for doing that, making the jump from intermediate to pro in one year, but also just to kind of elaborate to some people to move up. Everybody can do it. Did you start winning well, immediately also, in pro? There's a lot more people playing. The pond is a lot bigger. <laughs> no, I've I don't I've never won a I've never won a pro event. Not not, okay. not pro open. Never have. But my first event was a win though. Nice. It was a it was AM two about that one. It was AM two at the time, and I think it was the the first tournament at Two Rivers. And it may first not. It, may, it probably wasn't yeah, sanctioned. And there was, was no rank division back then. It was not sanctioned. So that was ninety four. I, I get, I get year the hogs won a national championship good. basketball well it was the, it was the, it was the first tournament at two rivers yeah okay yeah and uh, and because two rivers went in the ground in like 93 92 something geez. like that wow yeah i think like all of those like seven oaks was early 90s too it was like seven oaks and two rivers were like 91 92 93 94 mm-hmm. yeah, i thought the oaks was 80s but maybe it wasn't i think it was 90 I think. wow i think it was like 90 91 well when i well, the original layout gotcha but, so you know, when I you know at that tournament met Folger, you know you know got got sucked into the <laughs> the frisbee golf thing and and just uh, and went to the Oaks and started hanging out and met Ben Northcutt. Yeah, tell us about Ben. Uh, if, if there's if if I can, if if the sound of my voice can do one thing, it's to uh, sing the praises of Ben Northcutt, uh, one of the best people I've ever known in my life and. Uh, You know, um, you were close. I take it. Yes, well, I was close. Yeah, but I mean, he's such a such an awesome human being. And if you've got Griff, you've got me, you've got Kirby, you know, you know, all these people that do stuff on the course. We we if we if we're doing stuff, it was because we we learned it. Well, I learned it from Northcutt. You know, we'd go out there, in Seven Oaks, and do something, do something. He said, "Let's go play some golf." Nope. Gotta go. Gotta go over here and cut this tree. So, you know, that's that's where I learned. This, and and he's the one who's. He may not have invented it, but he's the one who said it. Disc golf ain't free. Wow. Those are so, those are words to echo, friends. And there's yes. you know still a core group of people, and it's always been like a core group, and the group has changed over the years. But that's one of the the big reasons for having somebody like you on this podcast too, is because like in a year like 2020 when we've got massive numbers of new players 
coming onto disc golf courses and massive amounts of new members joining the club and uh, people like every event we have, it's like there's a, a horde of people saying, this is my first tournament. Mm-hmm. And it's like, it's important for us to do something to show the example that was set for us and what we chose to pick up, you know, and, and put on ourselves. It's like, like you said, it's not free. Like you guys get to go out and play these awesome courses. Well, they don't get awesome on their own. Yeah. Like there's usually for each course, there's about five people that break their backs on a weekly basis to keep this, these places looking as awesome and, and being as awesome as they are. Yeah. Seven Oaks is special for a, a whole well, bunch of reasons, but like every well, course thrives on that core group of people. Sure. And that's a fortunate thing to have here in town. Dude. I mean, I, I, I want to say to it. anybody that's tuning into the podcast and listening into it for the first time or, you know, whatever your new player, whatever, this is the, the, the main bullet point of this presentation is like, think about everything that you take from disc golf, what you're getting from it. And every week, if you're playing disc golf three, four times a week, take one day to give a little bit back. Even if all it is is carrying a trash bag with you when you play your round yeah. and picking up trash, kicking sticks off the fairway, something. Take some ownership. Take some responsibility sure. for these courses. Because like I know what disc golf has given me is huge. Like it, it, you know, it's a, it sounds cliche, but like disc golf saved my life in a lot of ways. Like, and I think it's the same for a lot of people. Like sure. it's a drastic positive change late in your life for a lot of people that like people that used to compete in sports, people that used to have really social, like really tight social networks when they were in school. All walks be- of life. Yeah. And then you come into adulthood and you're married and you've got kids and a mortgage and you've got a job and all this stuff and you lose that competition you lose that that brotherhood or that fraternity you lose or just that social construct of 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 being involved in an endeavor with other people like that that unity sure well, people as a whole need community and the effects of that are huge exercise. that you don't even take stock of in, yeah. in later in life and so disc golf can come along for a lot of people and has and so I'm like, let's let's take stock of that. Let's really appreciate what it is that we get from disc golf. Let's give a little bit back. Sure. That's the way it continues to live. That's the way we keep it sustainable. I concur. So, um, you know, I'll you've well, been the leading the way asked, for a long time. Well, the reason why I ask you to bring up Northcutt and at least talk about him a little bit is because his name is over is on so many courses. And I know that when I first started, I always wondered, who's Ben Northcutt? I've, I've never seen him. I've never heard of him. Who's this guy? And he's got, like, hole 10 or hole five at or is, is it five downhill i don't know which hole it is at cedar hill seven. seven i don't know why i forgot that hole seven the north cut hole the, the elevated big ben elevated yeah. basket yeah, the, the ba- but i think he has one at two rivers and at seven oaks if not more than one is that right uh yes but his name's out there and so when you walk up on the tee pad and you see ben north cut it's, he didn't just pay to have his name on that sign he literally well he did he, he well did, I'm, he did yeah, that's how sponsorship <laughs> yeah, but, but full yeah. transparency he did but he Gave a lot of his oh, yeah, blood, was, sweat, and tears. He was, well, there wasn't a hundred people waiting in line sure. to buy, to per- sponsor those holes at that he time. He was he was our Mikey McDaniel's at the time. Yeah, yeah, he was the one who said, "Let's let's go do it and let's, get it done. Let's get to work." Um, I know. I was talking to Scott Stokely around the time that he was writing, like he had been writing his his book, uh, "Growing Up Disc Golf," but he reached out to me to confirm some stuff because he wanted to mention Dave in his book because. His first tournament, when he left on tour for the first time, was here in Nashville, and he stayed at Ben's house. Really? And yeah, and he he wanted to give Ben a mention in the book, and he didn't want to say anything that was inaccurate or whatever. Right. Nice. And so he he hit me up to ask some details, and I knew the gist of the story, but I think I I, I reached out to Rodney, and I may have te- sent you a text, or I, I may not have, but um, you know, just to confirm what it actually what it, what the whole story was but and he didn't go into detail or make a big thing out of it but he did well, do good. honor to ben and mention nice, that nice. he was like you know the, the, he was an awesome person and uh, yeah. you know him yeah. him being gone is a loss for disc golf yeah. and uh so that that was that was really awesome to me and that's one of the reasons like why me and scott get along is because he's he's a character but he's well, got a heart i was gonna say <laughs> he, got, he got a lot of flack for that book i've yeah. heard well he's got a lot of praise too well yeah he it did. was an awesome he was, book. he was he was honest and i think that's what caught him the flack oh yeah for and sure. he said at the very beginning i'm not going to be anything but honest in this book and well, i mean in the podcast he said that like before it got yeah. released he was talking about it. He was like look i'm honest he was like ask me anything you want 
I'll say whatever. The hardest thing for me sometimes, having a podcast and being able to just run my mouth a couple times a month like yeah, it happens. with my friends is like, it's so hard not to not, not to air some stuff out. As, we're, as we are know, not censored, we are somewhat like just um, a person and I'm not going to do that no, to you more. Try to be professional and not, you know, not be, take the high road. That's, that's If you, that's if the, you will. Um, unless yeah. you, unless you try to call us out on Facebook, then you're going to get the, the tongue lashing. Yeah. yeah, but you know, yeah, and it's and deserved. If you, if you, you come, come out, and holler at us on Facebook, ben, bro, let's go to war. What is awesome about? I'd like to say some more about Ben. Today. Yeah, what is go awesome about Ben, and what and what I think is, I mean, like obviously, like Jay mentioned, he contributed to all the courses in Nashville that are our mainstays. You know, he, he's involved with those at some level in all of them. But like, even the new people that like don't know anything about the the history of disc golf in Nashville, mm-hmm. they hear us talk about the elevated basket when we're playing it on seven or, or even when we're playing it on 10 and we're like, we call it big Ben Big Ben, and everybody knows that like these young kids that were born after 1995 <laughs> that are out here hanging out with us all the time and getting better than us at disc golf. You know, they're like, Oh, it's playing a big Ben. Nice. And, and you know what I mean? Like there's something really special about that, even if they don't know the full scope of the history. But the point of this is to give them a little bit of the scope of that history. And he, he deserves every bit of it. I mean, he's, um, thousands of hours of, of volunteer work by him and you know like i say i like to think of me as a, a son of him and like kirby as a grandson like yeah, yeah. you know th- that kind of thing you know people absolutely like, you know i was there and now hopefully kirby's learned something from me Kirby, like people like kirby jody and people everybody's like learned something from you i think looking at white house they've learned a lot from you brother because yeah. that place looks sharp well and you know you're you're not you're one of the few people that you know you're doing work all over. Like I, I see you out there working and, and the white house crew is, is exceptional about it as, as far as like traveling around oh, yeah. and supporting other courses as well. Um, but I mean like the, and we talk about it on the podcast all the time, just what a transition white house has made and how awesome it is now. It went from, it went from, I'll never play it again to, Oh, uh, I'll play it all the time you want. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. that's, and that's literally the way it was. If you went out there in the beginning you were like, eh, it's not worth the drive out here. And then now it's like, oh, heck yeah, I'll come out here and stay all day. But I know when we got a tournament coming up, if I need some work done on a course, I'm looking for Cedar Hill crew, White House crew. I'm like, please help. Please help. Because I might get 20 of these other people out there, and I'm going to have to hold their, hold their hand right. and show them what to yeah. do. But I can get three people from the White House Cedar Hill crew, and they show up and get it done. And, and that's it, nothing against any of you other guys out there. It's no, just experience. Yeah, and and that's why I'm saying you know lead by example. You know, follow these guys. Like the reason White House is so awesome, the reason Cedar Hill is so awesome is because you got a good group of guys. They get together, and it's not that hard, man. They get together early. You guys get together early on Sundays, seven o'clock. Work a little, work work for a couple hours, and then go play golf. Right, go have fun. And all the upkeep maintenance for the most part gets handled. And get those get those tree kicks. You just will not believe. Just yeah. Well, yeah, tree karma. Tree kicks, right? <laughs> tree oh, karma. That was a big thing. Griff stressed last week. You know, was like, I like to believe that. Go help a little bit. It's right. going to help your game. I promise. Exactly. I pick up trash all the time. Yeah, don't we all? <laughs> just saying, just throwing that out there, karma. Not all of us. <laughs> Maybe all of us. <laughs> I need some tree love sometimes. Is there really tree love? Uh, at oh, yeah. times, absolutely. Yes. And there's tree something else. You know, plants communicate with each other. Some do. I've actually uh, I all, watched the like trees. On that. They, so, they do. I yeah, guess I mean, since you brought up White House, who, who's the next course is going to implement a? Um, I guess will they have this? What's going on? The smaller course, the kids course. Kids course. Yeah. Yeah. What? What's ne- what, whose course next will have a kids course? Ooh, I don't know. Is that the only course in the country that has a, a kids course inside the course? That's the only one I know about. That's the only one I know of. That's I, mean, I, know. I mean, that, that needs huge. to be. That's, that that's was inc- why we chose to support incredible. it with those baskets. That's incredible. There were other courses that needed baskets worse. Yeah. But. That that idea, it was like I mean, you're accomplishing two huge projects with one investment. Yeah. We, I, I couldn't. Pass well, there's that some up. big name companies out there, Dynamic Disc and, and shout Anova. out to Lance Kirby for everything going on at White House uh, and Anova with the Edge program. They need to know about that, so at least they could be like, "Hey, there's they a- know about it." We, oh, we, they do. Okay. Well, we've been talking to. Um, I figured they might. You know, we were talking to like Madison Walker and Calvin Heinberg because mm-hmm. um, we're trying to have a oh, kids Calvin. event, like almost like a pro am, but like pair an adult up with a kid for an event at White House sometime during MCO week where it's like the adult would be playing to the regular pin, the kid would be playing, but they'd be on like a, a team 
you know, make like a team challenge kind of event out of it. Sure. Plans are still in the works, but uh, I think it'd be a cool idea. I know Madison and Calvin were out here earlier in the year, and they were both all on board with it. And Calvin's still coming. Madison has suspended her tour, but... Um, I don't know. She loves Cedar Hill. She might. She might. No, I already talked to her. Oh, did you? Yeah. That's a shame. Yeah. Maybe next year. Well, you know, her and Abby are out there seeing the sights. Oh, so she might be here anyway. Living the nomad life. I mean, they might show up. You never know. That's true. She's they're not playing they're the They're firecrackers, though. they are. Yeah. Well, that's a, that's upsetting because Madison loves Cedar Hill, so... And we that, love I Madison. She, well, of course, but I hate that she has to miss it. Yeah. But if you have looked at that registration, it is ridiculous with names. And the names on this are crazy. you got to scroll a really long time to get to the bottom. I, I got about halfway. We got feature with like a cards. Madness. We got feature cards coming. We got oh, three, you, oh, you want coverage? We got three media companies coming to do coverage. Who's coming? One, we two, three. Gatekeeper Media doing MPO1. We got... Um, Ace Run Productions doing MPO2 and Howard Disc Golf doing FPO1. Nice. So each one of those will have a feature card for round one, and then the second day they'll go to lead, lead and chase for MPO. But Wasn't there a fourth that might swing through or something? Well, also, Danny Lindahl will be here from Dynamic Disc. Yeah. Dynamic Disc is sending the big RV in the trailer. to. Uh, they're going to pack it full of course and assets, the tents, tents and flags and banners and all that stuff for all our courses. And they're going to come down here and uh, rock it out. And Danny's going to be running around with a camera yeah. doing some behind-the-scenes footage like we had from Bobby last year. And it's going to be awesome. Oh, so yeah. thank you, Danny. And thank you to uh, Gabe Serrano-Diaz, my team manager at Dynamic Disc, because he's hooking all this up and arranging yeah. the RV trip. As long as they send Derek and Jay ray Derek is not coming. What? Derek was going to be going to a wedding uh, back home in New York. Mm-hmm. And can't travel there because of COVID and is not going to offend aye, his family aye, aye. by traveling here instead. Gotcha. So, love to Derek. Mad love to Derek. Love you, Derek. He will not be here. Bobby will not be here. But it's going to be Carl Atwell, Danny Lindahl, and my team manager, Gabe. Can we rag coming. him about his moustache? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we sure I think he's gotten rid of the moustache. Oh, thank goodness. Yeah. Somebody got him good then, hopefully. Maybe well, it was Well, I think it lady. was all part probably a joke. I'm but, sure. but yeah. Or lost a Knowing bet, Danny. Something like that. But, I say, I got to vote. Y'all can shoot this down, throw it back at me, however you feel. I said we vote to take a break and then get I right back in the taking a break when we yeah. get back. Yeah. Yeah. Bathroom break. Bathroom break. Going to Tinkletown. <laughs> After these what messages. Is the, what is the... Whoa, 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 whoa. What's the official... Spec- Ooh. Five bucks per question? He's farm fresh. He's alleged he charges for that shit, bro. You know oh, that. well, yeah. This is coming out of my pocket. Disc golf ain't free. That's what he said. I can't wait for just the tip. Experience. I can, I can definitely agree to that because, all right, so spit on it. I, as I look through the um, the rest of the, I guess, tournaments that you played in my, I've, I've played, I've played in, I guess, uh, 70 less tournaments and you have $6,000 more play, more money made than me. <laughs> those were, those were nineties dollars too. <laughs> Ooh, those dollars are nice. <laughs> that was $20 a win. That was real yeah, money back then. You're like, so money meant buy, something yeah. way back then. Now cents, money's like, oh, we get this print some more. <laughs> <laughs> like when y'all when y'all actually paid with like quarters, right? Dollar bills. Are we back? Dollar bills around yet? We're back, right? Yeah, we're back. Oh, Woo! Shoot. what up? We're back. Hey guys. Uh, yeah, back with Farm Fresh. Greg Clement. Freshy hey, fresh. Should we do all the AKAs? Nah, I already nah, did. Nah, we freaky, freaky, fresh, it out. Fresh, 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 Plus, fresh, the only one that's freaky, like freaky, I really fresh, like is Farm Fresh. fresh. Eggland, yeah. Farm Fresh. How many of us here have played uh, Eggland? How many have been invited? <laughs> oh man my favorite hole i have no clue what the number is it's got to be like number four hey, it's got to be take, the one on the porch can i take the mic one. for a second that's where the cooler is wait let's talk about the eggland signature hole first well what, what real quick <laughs> before we go any further i want to say that greg i hope that you understand that i do know what an honor it is to be in, invited to your house oh thank you true and i have always the multiple times you have invited me and I haven't been able to make it, I have always appreciated what an honor it is, and I apologize oh, that I haven't been apologize. able to make out to your make it out to your house. But not only do I have a lot of disc golf stuff going on, but I also have a wife, and I, I try to give her at least one day every weekend if I can, so to speak. He's and heard all the excuses. I, I, it's it's an excuse, <laughs> but it's also you know I'm trying to maintain a balance with my real life. And it gets really hard to do with the volume oh, yeah. of stuff that I handle. And I want you to know that the moment that I have some free time, I, I would love to 
just come out and hang out with you and play your course. Even if nobody else is out there, okay. if that invitation is still open. Oh, yes, I, I'm, yes. Oh, there's I, a secret I, round that happens. I, I always was I was always kind of worried that you thought that maybe there was something secret. between oh, you no, and no, me no. No. by me not making it out to that stuff. And I hope you know that it, it has nothing to do with that. I have the... Dude, you are one of my heroes, man. Like, oh. all, all you FDD guys, like, that... that like, I... Will's I, about to cry. I am. <laughs> I am. Easy, but, killer. Easy, Papa Bear. Papa Bear. It's going to happen. If it's going to happen on any episode, it's it going to happen be this on this one. one. <laughs> yeah. but, um, but no, man, like, you are one of, like, literally, when I say you're one of my heroes, you you literally are. You're, you're one of the people that has inspired me. And that's why I put so much emphasis on, like, leading by example and, like, what you have done. Because... People like you and Griff and Billy Fowler, like I knew, you know, I found disc golf late in life. I've got injuries. I'm old and fat. You know, I love disc golf, but I'm never going to be competitive. You know what I mean? I'm never going to make anything now. of that. You're competitive now. But, like, I knew that I had the skill set and the knowledge and the expertise to make awesome events happen and make some cool things happen for the people that were playing disc golf in Nashville. And that was always where I found my fulfillment, right. you know. And, but I was always inspired by, like, what you guys did. Well, I appreciate that. And if, 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 if you're inspired by me, I have to say, you know, Ken Folger, Steve Hardy, yes, Dave Borders, Ralph Moffat, mm-hmm. mm-hmm. and they've all gotten huge uh, accolades but, from. I mean, us that, that's on where I show. learned. That's it's where like I learned good yeah. corn every year. My disc golf work some ethic. come back some come back we stronger. talked a little bit about like in the first segment we talked about you uh playing out at henry horton and getting pulled into events in 94 95 um but you were you know like we've got anything you'd just like to pull, share with the class pull Jay? back pull back when you're not talking <laughs> you were breathing into it yeah, he's allowed to do whatever he wants. <laughs> That's fine. He can. However, however, I just don't want that to like. Did we get off the discussion? Cover up your somebody's... favorite, my favorite hoe. We did. How dare you derail such an emotional <laughs> moment, dude? Like I, de- I derail it all the time. I was bro. so emotional. That's, That's what Jay's all about. Yeah, yeah bro. I break things. The derailer. Anyway, do fresh, it. I'm just saying. Have I'm, you met me? Back when you first got involved, I know you hooked up with Ken Folger, Steve Hardy, Ben Northcutt, Borders, Eiler. Gil, all those guys. So, tell us about where it became like a labor of love for you, where like you, where it clicked for you, and where you decided <clears throat> that you were not just going to take from disc golf, but you were going to invest in frisbee sports. Like, what about his favorite hole? Farm fresh is courses. We're going to work now. Way who's messing it? Work way around to now. It. Who's messing it? I up. won't forget. <laughs> All right, so find, you what find the I'm here. done. You guys just talk amongst yourselves. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't remember the the incident that said where I said, "Oh, that's, these guys right here working on the course." Like maybe uh, it may have been when I first went to, when I first went to that tournament and I was asking asking around and I talked to Folger and said, "But you know what's going on? What's the deal? What, what, what are y'all doing? Mm-hmm. Where what are these things? Where are these baskets?" and he told me. He explained to me that you know we're a volunteer organization. We work on courses. We we put the courses in. We buy the baskets. And so that may have got my started, but probably what it was was going and playing just playing Seven Oaks and seeing North cutting them out there, you know, mm-hmm. dragging limbs and taking the trash out and you, doing the things that most people don't even they just assume the parks does. And I'm I'm wondering if a lot of these new people that that come in assume the same thing that the parks does it all. So they maybe, probably do or yeah, don't care. Yeah. One of the two. I don't think they. They're. I, I, well, I, don't, they're, I mean, and I'm not gonna say that I fault them for not thinking this deep, right? But I don't think their thought gets to that point. I think. Yeah, at that point, they're like when they're first picking it up. This is a whole area of like probably parks that they've been around their whole life, and they just have never seen this part of the park, and yeah. so and there's this whole you know, mythical wonder of discovering disc golf that happens for everybody that first gets hooked where it's like somebody, you know, takes you out for a round right. and you have this one shot out of 18 holes and 173 shots. 
you have this one shot where you throw this disc that you know nothing about and it flies exactly how you want it to and you get hooked and then it's like it's an obsession it's this experience of wonderment and ecstasy and it's like this is something new that like i could i could latch on to and 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 i think a lot of people just and and that's why i say i don't want to fault anybody for it because it's like when you find disc golf when you discover it and it becomes a part of your life it's this just get overwhelming the, like your whole disc golf life tunnel vision. you find new me new meaning for yeah. your life like i mean like for me it was i had very few friends i had no athletic outlet i had no competitive outlet i was isolated i mean i love my wife me and her are, have always been very happy together but i just didn't have very many friends here when i married my wife i had to let go of all the negativity and the and the the party animals that i was hanging out with and stuff like that and so it was like I, you know I, I was trying to find people that i could do something constructive and and positive with and disc golf just changed my entire world and i know that feeling where it's like you, people are realizing this is going to be the rest of my life i'm going to play this game for the rest of my life yeah. and it's a very special thing and so i don't want to fault anybody for not thinking well, they, they just get, the, they get stuck in that, I want to guess that tunnel thing. vision like where it's just obsession, like you said, and keep going and getting better and play and play and play and play. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. then once they snap out of it or play and play and play and buy and, and, for buy, me and buy. And for me, it's very specific because yeah. I'm like, I want to run a tournament. The course has to be in a certain shape sure. for me to run a tournament. So that was my exposure yeah. to how the courses are maintained and who's involved and why we have the system in place that we do now. Sure. It's because like... I understood immediately, like, if we're going to have a good event, this course needs to be in tip-top shape. Sure. Who are the people that are taking care of it? Like, some courses have better attention than others. Like, you've like you've been involved, like like we were talking about off on the break, like, you've been involved in multiple courses, crews. Like, you just travel around and help people out. And I'm sure between the five of us, I'm sure you guys all have a, a pantheon of farm fresh stories but i can say that my favorite and the the one farm fresh story that will always stick out to me and it was before me and you knew each each other relatively well yeah um i think it was 2017 mco we were at cedar hill it was when we had the pros rotating and just for everybody watching the reason the pros are staying at one course for three rounds is because that's what they want to do. And I'm a, I'm trying to get you guys the best pros in the world to come here and play in Nashville. And they want if it's a three round tournament, they want to play one course. So that's it. But back then, 2017, before that was knowledge to me, before I was the TD of the event, we were at Cedar Hill for one round. I was in charge of running tee times for a pool for one day. And immediately first thing out the gate in the morning, Somebody discovered a massive pile of shit <laughs> on a fairway. We That's were starting awful. on hole 10. So we had a whole little table where we were running, where I was running tea times before Dr. Hoy saved my life. <laughs> tea times all day sucks. Wow. This guy's a hero. Um, yeah, we know. But tea times sucks. Yes, golf snaps. But I was, so I, was I was setting up the table and all this stuff. And I had the Latitude 64 RV right there trying to set up for vending. And somebody comes up and says, man, we found a, we found a massive pile of shit on Tens Fairway. We're pretty sure it's humans. <laughs> no, the first person that told me about it said it was a great day. It had to be a great day. No, it, was, it was a big... That was a man, and then, man day. And then two people came up to me together and said, no, sir, this was a human duke. And there were t probably just shy of 10 of us standing around trying to wrap our brains around <laughs> like what the hell all hey, trying to block out the visual of, <laughs> of some because you know like that was an emergency Cedar hill after bro. dark was i a, mean like, like was a, trying to block out somebody just uh gotta go that Man. was i can't hold yeah. it anymore yeah it. and i'm like sitting here going what i'm i just want to run a tournament <laughs> and freshie comes up and he goes give me a bag and gloves do you have a bag of gloves? And I was like, and he goes off and cleans it up. No questions was asked. Was it still warm? Like, not even no questions asked. I also had a shelf, though. 
But he asked the question. <laughs> but, he, but hey, man, this is what separates the mice from the men. This That's dude true. came up in the middle of this. He like, also apologized for me. pooping on the fairway. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uh, I'm out. <laughs> I'm, like, I'm real sorry about that. I didn't mean to. I meant they had got there by now, but since you guys pointed it out, I might as well. You see what you know, happened? You got was. like a yeah. I'll, I'll take care of it because, but just by chance, I've got a shovel. Yeah. I've got a shovel. Anybody got a napkin? What the fuck? No, bro. I mean. When it comes down to that, I know somebody who had to do that one day, okay? Uh, dude, the, one, the thing James, you do, you literally you, you just walk to the woods that, and you find like a string. You just block it out, man. Of leaves. And you just pull those leaves right off. That never happened. Just like you got like a, you no. know how you used to whip, whip no. when you look? Yeah. That whipping, that, that, that switch, it yeah, had yeah. a bunch of leaves. No. And you just pull all the leaves off of it. You, you keep just, a poop towel. No. Mm. So you need to keep but a poop towel. The second thing, here's the second thing you do. You might go home with no socks one day. Like, hey, where's your socks? <laughs> or no, your farm fresh. had to go poop in the woods. <laughs> or your farm fresh and you got balls of steel and you just like grab a trash bag and go elbow deep in a pile of human shit. And that's exactly what with a shovel. farm fresh wow. did. And dude. No, there was a shovel involved. Somebody yeah, used somebody a shovel. It's all good. The truth comes what out. I, the point is, is there were 10 people standing around going, what the fuck? And, and you just just like, give me some shit. I'm going to go clean it up. Poop. And like, dude, that is like roll tide, but that's the volunteer <laughs> spirit, dude. Like you are. Does that earn him another nickname? I don't know what kind of nickname what? that would be, but we'd have to sir, make it like some kind like of weird sir amalgamation. Code Brown. We could knight him, sir. Sir, sir Farm Fresh. Fresh. Farm Fresh. Volunteer of the motherfucking year. Volunteer of the universe. Well, speaking, speaking of that. Master um, Shoveler. One, one name that we haven't mentioned yet. Tell us a little bit about Billy motherfucking Fowler. Billy Fowler. The Billy Fowler Fowler's origin story. Mo- you don't Sherry say Billy Fowler without adding the motherfucking mother, in front yes, of it. Yes, or in between yes. it. So yeah, it's a sandwich. I forget the year. That motherfucking is the meat. You got to add pastrami. the motherfucking meat. So back in the, the day, sandwich. we were we were out there working on working at Cedar Hill, doing something, and Billy came walking up. And said, what are y'all doing? Well, you know, uh, we come out here at seven o'clock, work on the course, and yada yada yada. And he goes, "I'll I'll see y'all next week." And we're like, "Yeah, cool." You know, we've heard we've heard, we've heard that heard before. That. But he showed up the next week. The next week. Now when uh, now when we're doing stuff, we we call Billy and say, Billy, what are we gonna do this week? You know, no way. Now Billy's Billy's got the backhoes and the bobcats and the know-how and that's it. I'm gonna try to help you guys. When did you, when did you make your horse? I started working on my course when I started working on Cedar Hill. Uh, when, when did Cedar Hill go in? Ninety-seven. Ninety-seven. Ninety-eight. So I started working on it ninety-seven. Mm-hmm. I started off. I was just gonna make a little nine-hole ABR course, but yeah, then it just because, I mean, I, I think it's like going back to trying to answer the question that we were asked a long time ago. I think that, that, that when you make your own course in the backyard, that's when you found your love. Yeah. 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 I'm, I'm thinking that's the, sure the answer yeah. to that question that was probably never answered. But if you got a course in your backyard, the moment you start putting that course in, you're like, okay, I it's, really like this sport. This is fun. <laughs> and for those who don't know, I believe it is it nine or ten acres? Ten? Nine and a half. Nine and a half acres he did Nice. 18 holes. I was. I never even Nine thought about that. For how many awesome. years before you started laying out disc golf holes in your yard? How many years were you going on road trips with your wife and everywhere you went, you're looking out the window as you're driving, going, "That makes a good beautiful. golf hole." Be a great hole. I want to throw a disc golf there. My favorite are the massive power um, stars that are up there, and then they're always on massive hills. I'm like, I just want to go to the top. Yeah, just throw straight all down. the way down. The best place yeah. to throw a disc off and lose it and not for, not even worry about it is um, in Alabama. There's that a park. course called Montesano. Yeah, we you took me there. Mm-hmm. And oh, there's man. literally like I guess it's like on hole five or six. There's this huge like overlook, and you literally can see for maybe two and a half miles. It's amazing. Yeah, wow. But I, I've I've got to have. 15 and 16 discs down there because every time I go there I'm like okay big old Anheuser watch it fly use Ooh. caution <laughs> definitely use caution oh here's Tony it's coming out it's coming out ooh alright that was fun the rock wall <laughs> the rock like wall that. that you have to throw basically from behind because it's kind of like a bridge kind of sort of it's like thigh high so you definitely do not want to get too hey too, can uh, I just I, I just want to take a moment and and say that if I were a mob boss mm-hmm. 
living on an outpost on the Jupiter moon of Titan in the year 2065. The chair that I would be sitting in at my <laughs> desk is pretty much what Jay is sitting in right now. Because I don't know if you guys can tell if you're watching the YouTube, but nobody can be comfortable because Jay's like taking three airplane seats Bro. with his Bro. fucking monstrosity of a gaming chair that he insisted that we all help him put in the studio. All and I asked was for you to hold the door. Guest Greg Farm Fresh Clement is pushed out where he's getting hit in the back of the head with the door every time somebody tries to take a piss. Hey, Who's congratulations, the- Jay. You win again. <laughs> Naturally. Yeah. He's a winner. I mean, pretty much. For the, for the people that have played Eggland, I need to hear and a little. For everybody that thinks that I'm just unnecessarily hating on I wanna, Jay. I want to no, hear a little no, bit no, about no. the course. Hold on. Hold this on. is totally chair envy. Okay. I totally wish that I had a chair as awesome as Jay has. It locks Jay just too. took matters into his own hand, and I'm jealous, and that's why I'm striking out so underhandedly Thanks, in the middle Costco. of the podcast. It's, it's not about the size of your chair, Will. It's about what you do with it. <laughs> okay, so... Oh, I'm so. doing a whole lot with mine right now. <laughs> <laughs> I only got two people in my camera. Y'all you got may have to get Farm people. Fresh's shovel. <laughs> All right, so um, hold on one second. Home. Marcus has something to say. I want to say this to clarify, to answer, and rebuttal Will. Stand up, Dr. Hoy. Get that camera on this guy right here. It's on him. It's on his belly. No, no, scooch over. Not you. Not you. This guy right here. That's the originator. That's the first office chair. I sat in the 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 first time we were in here. We've all done it. I just happened to have been (laughs) done it for like the past two, three months. So I'm done with it. That's all I'm saying. Well, Dr. Hoyt, (laughs) you are charged with getting a more elaborate gaming chair for the podcast. There's one with a footrest if you get it off the internet, which I really wanted, but I figured I wouldn't take up that much You're fucking hogging a microphone (laughs) and a fucking throne, like a Game of Thrones, like the Iron Throne. All right. So and we're going to need to get some more of these. on a little fucking stool. I've been sitting on that. And share a microphone. I've been sitting on that. Hey, bro. That's disrespectful. Is it? Or is it just, like, innovative? (laughs) <laughs> or maybe we're fighting in the parking lot. Hey, bro, I can raise and lower my arm handles, too. These can be our I think it's hold, too. <laughs> All right, so back to, to Eggland. Anyway, now back my, to Eggland. Now that the elephant hey, runs out of the way. You have One. your own disc golf course, and it's pretty awesome. And two's on the side, right? Yeah. But what not as it? awesome as my chair. Definitely hold, too. The, through the woods, or are you talking about down the, down the creek? You got this, yeah, you got the slope on your right? It's got to be hold, too. Hole two is um, two goes right, that, back, by, yeah. right back by the house. The sure. Baskets from by the house. Yeah. Okay. How, how many times have you been there, bud? Uh, seven. He said adjusted it a couple times here or there, but no, not those holes. Those are yeah, been, I think yeah, I one. Think yeah, it's always accurate. been. That are you talking one. about the? Are you talking about the hole where you look down? It's it's down down the yeah, creek. Yeah, down the valley. Yeah. Yeah, that's four. Okay, I'll yeah, say it right yeah, the first time. Yeah, yeah, hole four. Yeah, 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 absolute favorite hole. Yeah, it's probably a signature hole. Yeah, mm. like the one I've seen the not most pictures the biggest of. Fan. Like you're up on the hillside. And you got a gap going down, and the hill goes down like this, and you're going kind of down and around. That's what we're talking about. Yeah, that's probably yeah. four. Okay, yeah. four. Yeah, yeah. 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 It's. A I haven't played there. We hole, talked about man. it earlier. Like, there's not many holes in Tennessee like this. I'm like, a lame like, ass. Like I tell you, if um, Ed Birdie had a chance on his Don't course bring a to make a hole like that, he would have to use so much of his land. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, it's 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 a, yeah, it's definitely like a tough high. I mean. You pick it. You can throw a flick. You can throw a backhand flippy. You can. There's so much you can do right there. And like the whole time, you're like you're just holding your breath. Like <gasps> get past these trees. <laughs> get past the tre- yes, man. That's a great. It's a great feeling. That's why you know there's always a signature hold and something like you, you remember about courses and like your course hands down. That's that's the one I get out there. I mean, I wish I could go out there and practice that hole without losing like 16 discs. <laughs> I feel like like you but, definitely yeah. have signature holes out there. And and on hole four, I agree with you guys, but. I think your course in itself is just a signature course. The way it's set up, the the way you utilize the land, and I've been out there quite a lot, and I've got the got it one time that was okay. The rest of the times it's it's killer. <laughs> so if you are listening, <laughs> and you have you already hold one, I'm probably like three or four or five thousand times. What? I mean, I mean I've only course, done it twice, but okay. I don't know. No, uh, exactly. <laughs> No check this motherfucker. Yeah. <laughs> I've been played it that many times. Fresh, but, come on. But That's the whole course, shot. because of the design and how it's used and the way it's set up with the land, yeah. is pretty yeah. signature. But 
so if you're listening and you do get the invite one day and you think that you are even remotely good at disc golf, go play it. Go, go play take it. that invite because yeah. it you'll you'll find that you're not that good. <laughs> yeah. And there, there speaking is, of separating the men, the mice the, from the men, yeah. the men from the boys, yeah. they don't call him butter for nothing. There is drone footage on on YouTube. Go uh, mm-hmm. go to YouTube Eggland Disc Golf. You can see it. How many drones it take to get through that? Three. One YouTube drone. Eggland Disc Golf drone footage. Do it. Do it. Check it out. Man, there's so many signature uh, holes though. Ten also, signature. Uh, you gotta go up that, or not ten, but five. You what's go the par up that out there? Massive hill. Uh, par is like four. par is three on everything. Yeah. There's Basically, well, you got course okay. records. And you got one stats four. Or? It's a it's a <laughs> this soft is just four. Gonna open up a big can of <laughs> <It's a> soft. <laughs> no, dude, I there's I I literally go to Eggland to better my game because you if you can't throw two step finesse power shots, you're not gonna do. You're gonna go home by three holes. You're gonna be all over the place. You have to be able to throw a rock three hundred or a putter three hundred most of the time. Because the it's a sh- it's a shot shaping course. If you can't shape your shots, I heard you, you almost no said chance. shit shaping. I, I ship I shape a lot of ships. Shape a lot of shits. There's two there's two par they fours out ships. there. And it's well when uh, back in the day Alpo did a had an event out there in uh, nine. Was that Alpo or Tidwell? Alpo. Well, that oh. wasn't that back in the day. Oh, that Alpo was, like, did the last dubs, year. Yeah, that Voodoo Dubs. No, this was before that. It, oh, he okay. did a he did a, a series. It, he did a rated round out there. Yeah. Oh, okay. And two and two over. <laughs> no <nine>. family <laughs> they fun count that frisbee one for me. time with friends. May have been something like that. Yeah, it was like a league, and they used because I think at the tail end it overlapped with the bag tag series event one, and you had run it through the winter, or like the no, this was, this that was was one time. Oh, thing. okay. Man's Never mind. <laughs> Way off base. Here's sorry. Story. I'm just fact checking <laughs> him you, so Greg. he can get back to the story. I'm sorry. Sorry, guys. <laughs> I've got. Pardon my. I've got an opinion. I've got an opinion. Opinion about that round. I got a lot of things to say, you guys. Any which I heard. So, uh, so two over was nine eighty rated. So, that's two. dude. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Two I over. I didn't even make nine hundred, bro. Woo. I think the hole. I think the hole you're talking about is the um, uphill hole. Well, I'm glad we did this podcast before see, I played the course because now you can't I'm see the here. basket at all. Because yeah. you're apologizing to me now. It's a bounty hole. After you come play, I have to apologize. That's a four. <laughs> That's is there the a four. turkey? I'm so sorry. Is there a turkey on the hole we're talking yeah. about? Yeah, yeah. yeah. going up. Yeah, because you go ahead. down and then back up. Yeah. Back up. Yeah. yeah. That's the. That's Where do you go down? Oh, when you're teeing off, you're just oh, talking four. about being at the bottom. Oh, yeah, four. Yeah, yeah. I was like the. I was like that's straight up. There's no down to that hole. Well, you you throw you throw down on four. On four, yeah. Back up. Yep. I'm just specifically talking about motherfucking five and that damn hole. It's a bounty hole, too. <laughs> well, you know, know everybody's yeah, always looking for something to blame it. their bad game on. Oh, no, so. I blame me totally, but that hole's hard. The next yeah. hole I find to be pretty signature, the That's the why there's elephant a shelf hole, life for TVs. The Bama hole, Roll six. Tides. Oh, elephant hole. And you get a stroke if you hit the elephant. It's one of the elephants. There's an elephant? There's, uh-huh. A stone there's one. There's elephants? Yeah. I fucking three, love elephants. Three elephants. You got to find them. They're like Easter time. eggs out there. There's also <laughs> cherries that you pluck out with bamboo sticks, <laughs> and you have to know about those too. Man, you just we when did you, when that event happened out there, and I'm okay with anybody running an events, and I'm props to you for letting letting it happen on your land. But I I was like, get out of here, guys. You get get out of here. To me, it's it's special. Like that was like when you invited me out there. It was like your oh, another rite of passage within the disc golf community because not everybody gets that invite. You got to be one a decent golfer, but two you got to be good peeps to come out there. And so to me, that it's like a not an elite thing, but a privilege. Well, that thing. was why I started out this conversation by saying yeah. like I'm sorry I haven't made it out there, and no, I understand yeah. what an honor it is to get the invite because it is a, a premium thing. It's like not just anybody can come out here and hang out. Like this is family. Well, and, and, and I, I want you to know, I do feel incredibly privileged and honored to be yeah. considered among that group. And you know, it was never. It's always just been hard for me to do. I understand. I mean, I haven't You're played busy. in a month, and like you got to pass the. But I got to ask you this though, Greg. Like, why? Like, because to my knowledge, your course at your home is the only course you've ever designed. Is that not the case? I mean, like you've been, you've had involvement with the team. In the installation of a lot of courses, but like, did you ever have an ambition to like branch out and go and design a course somewhere and like be, you know, 
like do do get your H B Clark on and like you know, was that ever something that occurred to you? Or? Oh yeah, I'd, I'd love to design a course, but just nobody ever said, "Hey, you can just come design a course for me." So yeah, it never happened. Not yet. They have played their course. Well, not yet. Off the air. Let's stop. All right. We had some uh, yeah. listener questions actually. Oh um, lord. About oh, Ed Birdie. Ed Birdie. Ed Birdie. Ask about the VW vans. Oh lord, have mercy. Yeah, Ed. let's hear about Ed this. this sounds, how you met Ed good. Birdie? Yeah. Spin a yarn. Spin okay. a yarn. Hold Story on. time with Flash it back. Farm what, what year are we AKA looking out here? Boy. AKA eight. 1903, AKA 1905. AKA what what year? Here. It's going to be pissed because I don't remember the I don't remember the day we met, but I do remember he had a bus and I had a bus, and that probably got us talking. Sure. We were we we're our PDGA numbers were pretty similar, we, so we always competed against each other and saw each other and hugged each other every time we saw each other back in the day. You know, back when we were just kids. Back when we were young. Whose course is harder, yours or his? I've got a picture. I don't know. That's a good question. Depends on which which birdie course you play. Now, see, that's one on my notch that I need to do respect to is Buddy Ridge. I've never oh, been, Birdie Ridge. I've is, never been there. Really? Mm-hmm. Oh, it's a it's, – Out of all the years? Yeah, birdies, birdies, he knows what he's doing. They're Saturday event, it's usually, and so I work – and it's like an extra day I had to take off, and it's hard yeah. to do so. Sometimes. Have you been to Birdie Marcus? You been to Birdie? Yeah, he's been to oh, Birdie. Yeah. Now I like Short Mountain when it's not raining. You know? What about uh, Jeremy Johnson? <laughs> ask a question. <laughs> ask who him. Ask him dog. who walked the J-J, dog. JJ. JJ did. <laughs> oh, once you answer, but this. that's ping pong related. Ask him. <laughs> well, that's fine. <laughs> Competitive ping pong. Does that take place at Eggland? No, this was uh, this was on uh, one of the, on one of our trips. Uh, we, we were playing ping pong late at night. And he, 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 yeah, yeah, he did. He was walking the dog. He was making me go back and forth. He was, he dominated. Oh the man, ping pong. who is this? J, uh, Jeremy, JJ. He Jeremy. does a lot of fishing. Oh, all right, all right. I throw down some ping, some ping pong. Grew up with a table in the G Raj. Had the nice fancy paddles with like, you know, not the dimples but the smooth sides, black and red. You can put a is, little more English on it that way. Is there any stories that you can tell us from? Working out at Cedar Hill in the mornings that, that are oh, oh good lord. lord oh lord funny I can tell you the the first time I went to Cedar Hill uh, all right <laughs> let's da- hear about it Dave Borders hooked uh, got me to go out there we, you know we were working and playing and he said they were it was uh, I don't I don't know if, I don't I haven't heard this on a podcast that Dave Borders Ralph Moffat and Ben Northcutt designed Cedar Hill wow so history so I we were. They were working on it, and I was still kind of, I guess, still doing my thing at Seven Oaks. And Dave said, "Let's go." There's, there's Ed Birdie. Whoa! There's the bus. Look at, look at those kids. Look at that guy. Look at those kids. Whoa. Look at Fresh those. Fresh in the flannel. Check out, check no out, check out, way. Check out that, check out that pre zuka I got, I had there. <laughs> the pre zuka Don't you still have that one? Is that not the same one you use now? Frodo Zuka. Hey, can we rank? Hold on, How I want, good I want, am I? <laughs> I want the answer to that yeah, question. Yeah, snaps for that one, bro. Call uh, snaps for Will. Look how handsome Birdie used to be. That needs to go up courses. on the MCDG archive. <laughs> Look at that. I gotta hear. I gotta hear this history. So that was the bus. Yeah. That was the bus I had. There was that. Well, that Save was it. A, hold man, it. Man, that was a sweet bus. That was why I made you guys hold on for a minute. I was like, first I time. Get this thing first first time you went to Cedar Hill. Oh yes. Uh, so, Any interesting things happen? So I got there early, and Dave Dave had Dave wasn't there yet. So I threw a shot on one. One was there was I don't, there was no tee pad, but you could, there was a place you could throw on one. So I threw a shot. It rolled off into the into the right. By the, the right park, side shul. The right side shul by the parking lot. In, yeah. in a ditch. I went over there. It was old stinger. I went over there to get it, and there was a Polaroid laying upside down. And I went to go get my frisbee. And I'd already heard some of the stories about Cedar Hill. Mm-hmm. I thought nah, I'd better Polaroid. not look at it, but. I, I did anyway, I did, but I did, and it was a a naked person. <laughs> well, well, that goes one of two ways. Shocker. <laughs> that so that was my that was my introduction to Cedar Hill. Your initiation, yeah. very nice. Yeah. Well, that's about how Cedar Hill Cedar I've Hill is. I've never seen beautiful course, at Cedar great Hill, disc but golf. I've seen some crazy. So I right. literally was of all the people who have courses at their home. Have you played the majority of people who have courses at their home? Mm. Like in the state, uh, he's a regular. Around at Ogwood. here, you know, I know uh, that. obviously, I mean, Ogwood, yeah. 
Uh, Birdie, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, the There's a couple other Somebody, ones that have the, been around. The cabin. Out. Help me out. Pegram had one at one point. The cabin. <laughs> There's one in particular I'm missing right now. It's, yeah, it's, 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 the, I the Shire. Keep the it shire. secret. Shire. Keep it safe. Play the, the Shire. shire. Play the Shire. Yep. Mm-hmm. Um, I got the There's opportunity one... to play it just before it everything went, went away. Odie pulled the plug, and and I will forever be grateful. Oh yeah, for the that shire memory. Was, the shire was a plan. And thank you to Rick Casey for that invite because he cleared it with Odie. Odie said it was cool because you can't go without the Shire unless you, you you know somebody vouches for you. I want to be knowing what's going on with the baskets out off 96. If anybody knows who's, whose place that is out there, because that's some Which beautiful. One? Out off Highway 96, out by Natchez Trace, there's like four right or here. five baskets, mm-hmm. yellow and Nova disc catchers. Oh, it's definitely not what I was thinking about. Yeah. But I don't know. dude's got lots of land and a really nice house, but he's got baskets out there, so I've always been curious whose place that is. Yeah, right? yeah it looks like he's got his own little mini course out there, too. Trace Creek, have you got to play it? Yep. No. So yeah, it's, it's worth it. Hole, right is it, over here is it a public course? You can go play it. Yes. Nobody will give you any He's got problem. the deets. He's got the deets on it for what future plans and where they're at. Yeah, they are looking at putting in a parking area for di- the disc golf course, and they are looking at putting in another nine holes. Is it on private property? or is It, is it, it is part of a, a, a development of subdivision. That will be gated. Stevens, Stevens Valley. So it's Trace Creek at Stevens Valley. So... You pull into the neighborhood. You can find a place to park. Walk across, uh, walk the trail across the covered bridge, and go around the corner and find hole one. And dude, it, I mean, like, it's a great training ground. I've heard for good sure. things about it, but I just didn't. Like me and him have played it a couple times. You can literally Marcus go out it. there with you know whatever practice disc, and you can throw multiple drives. And there's literally a hole to work on everything. Yeah, and there's never anybody out there. Yeah, very rarely. Which that used to be Crockett Park for me. Like, I would go out to Crockett Park if I had a new disc I wanted to work yeah. in or if I needed to work on a shot or get to know, you know. Certain like, disc. You know, just tune up or whatever. Yeah. Like, you go out to Crockett Park because there's never anybody there. You can empty your bag on every hole. It's like Crockett, not holding but anybody up. Now, better Crockett's not like that. Crockett's got, it's packed. Like, Ooh, yeah. Const, groups on every hole. People holding wow. three discs in their hand. Like. New disc offers go. Somebody needs to tell Williamson County to get some T pads. I know they got a few. No, they've been working on it. They, they've well, gotten the, the Eagle Scouts. Have. Well, Ron Pittman and the Williamson County sure. Club got that working with the Eagle Scouts. And that's projects, good, but, just taking a long time. Yeah, but that's the only way it was ever going to yeah, happen. So, so props to Ron on that one. But it's got turf T pads out there at Trace Creek. We probably shouldn't be talking about it on a podcast. And, I'm like, not talking about it. I don't know what you're talking about. I don't know. What did you say? I was talking about T pads at Trace Creek. <clears throat> Or Stevens. Never Valley. mind. Uh, we were trying to go. On. I want to actually hear about what? the first time I met I'm confused. Fresh. He had a elastic band in his car door, slammed shut, and he was doing some exercises, getting ready for an event. Right. And I was like, "Who is this guy?" <laughs> so they're doing. So I want to hear. I want to hear some of these tournament Plyo. strategies. I need. I need to learn. I learned some stuff. He's learned just a couple. Up, bro. Yeah. Get there Somebody's, thirty minutes early and uh, thirty minutes. Get everything all warmed up and go hit some putts. Coming from the guy yeah. who's there an hour and a <laughs> half some, early and play some catch. Yeah, because I think on right. Huckfest you played pretty well. That, that's first, the turn first round. Thinking. First round. First round. Oh, <laughs> he does tend to show up several hours. Yeah, I was going to say thirty begins. minutes before. What? <laughs> that's how that human Duke got cleaned up at MCO <laughs> that year. Well, like I said, you should. We should make him. We a were plaque. the only people that knew. We about should it. make him a Thanks, plaque buddy. with that. I love you. My pleasure. Legend Sorry. Legend. One other thing I was going to ask about tournaments was. I feel like it's a rite of passage to be heckled by you or commented on by you. Like, oh yeah, that's sure. like, has that always been part of your game? Oh like, yeah, oh yeah. Well, well especially the people you know. Yeah. It seems like you know the people you know. If, if, if I give you crap, I like you. Yeah, because you'd be like <laughs> yeah. five bucks. You're like, oh, great layup. <laughs> like, kind of miss spot or something. And you know, you're allowed to give him crap back. Yeah. Well, I don't know about that. But, you know. Well, if you're going to do it, <laughs> you better you be better it. come hard. You yeah, come with it because he'll he'll take you to town. Because exactly. there was probably one time where he made a joke and I tried to make a joke back and it was weak. <laughs> and then he got me. That's even worse. And then I was like, never again. I'm just going to sit over here with my say, tail between I'm either going to smile and nod or I'm going to have something solid. Yeah. Pineapple. Packed in the sleeve. Pineapple. Hey, uh, what's just one the thing that you would tell a new disc golfer or anybody that just the tip you say <laughs> needs like a little bit of advice. What would you tell like is anybody just like it doesn't have to be like you know 
form related. It doesn't have to be like, it could be like showing up on time. It could be like, you know, stretching before a round. What, what's one tip that you have for somebody that's getting into the sport or, or anybody? I would, this, this is a tip for everybody yeah. is, is play catch with a putter. Yeah. Get your buddy, start Disc out. Disc golf hack. Especially if you're just starting out, you know, take, get a putter. Start out, get you know, get thirty feet from your buddy, pitch it back and forth to where you're just your buddy doesn't have to move, you don't have to move, and then take a step back, and then yeah. just keep doing that, because you know that that way you learn the touch and mm-hmm. the form and the power, and just keep going back till you're throwing your putter as hard as you can and you're running and catching it. That's awesome. Just the tip. You heard it here. Succinct, tip. clear, concise. That's a win. I think, I think that's the first most one. Clean. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> we haven't had to ask somebody. Only took 94 times. episodes. Hey, but, hey, <laughs> hey, is it time for the tip <laughs> of the week? Is, is it time? Is it time? Oh, yes, Can we do a, just a tip? Thank you for that. Hoy gave me a dirty that was really good tip too. Thank Great. You. Hoy awesome. gave me a dirty look oh, there because every oh, round we play together, I'm like, hey, let's play catch. And he's always like, yeah. <laughs> all right. And I'm like, see? See? Yeah. That's where I learned to play catch. He was like, go out there and play catch, man. That's how you warm up. I was like, all right. Well, let's do it. The putters are the secret, dude. People don't the even understand. The two things I've heard is warm up with a putter and a buddy and throw before rocks. a tournament. And if you feel like you need a tune-up, go play your favorite course with just a putter. That's true. To quote Glenn Diamateo, AVR therapy. That's what we do. Oh, AVR therapy. Oh, I like AVR that. Therapy. Speak on Mateo for a minute because he's an unsung hero. True. We, we've true. had, we've had, you know, we've had Folger, we've had you, we've had Hardy, we've had Griff. We've had all these people that have, you know, and we've mentioned names like Borders and Northcutt and Eiler and Gill and all that stuff. But I think Mateo doesn't get near enough credit. So tell us who Mateo was. Glenn D. Mateo. He um, he started the, I'm, to my knowledge, the best of my knowledge, he was he started the handicap league at Cedar Hill and not Cedar Hill at Seven Oaks. So that was it, that was the first time anybody started a, a league where everybody played and competed against each other, and you got strokes depending on your level of proficiency. Mm-hmm. Yeah, <laughs> and so he sure. and he was a and he was a worker. We'd we'd get out there at seven o'clock before the round and pick up sticks, cut down a tree, we'd eat whatever, and just and hang out and work. And I haven't seen him in years and years. Man. Is he still around? I, I mean, I, no, I, I've never, I haven't, of course, I don't, go to, I don't go to Seven Oaks that often, so uh, yeah. I haven't seen him there, I haven't, and I ask, I ask every now and then, I ask people that knew, that also knew, and they haven't heard, they haven't heard anything from him, so. That's such a May good, have moved on to greener pastures, I guess. Such a good idea, but a, a, a pattern that I've noticed from a lot of the guys who have been around a while who do the course maintenance at a lot of places, they all do work rounds every week, minor cleanup, you know, I guess, preventative maintenance well, if you will. Well that's all it takes. You well, get that's, together a couple hours well, early Well I was just gonna point gonna out play. that's another way if you don't want to pick up trash or haul a trash bag around, go out there to those morning work rounds. Mm-hmm. These guys they you know they'll they sting mm-hmm. a little bit, but they're pretty nice guys. You know? They'll 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 we'll warm Everybody up a little be fresh. bit. <laughs> I don't know. Fresh can be a little thorny at times. Well gr- Fresh has the the unique spot of he's not necessarily a course captain anywhere. You know what I mean? Like he's like He's, he's just like he's got I'm, Eggland, and then like he's at White House, he's at Cedar Hill, he's at, but you know you got Lance Kirby, you got Billy Fowler. Those are the guys that take all the heat. The one thing I noticed about <laughs> him is he always goes where the good peeps and the good beers are. Absolutely. <laughs> if you find Greg Clement anywhere on a disc golf course in Nashville, you are guaranteed to find him surrounded by good people. Absolutely. I'm, Speaking I'm of good blessed. people. Um, one of the other disc golfers I know that's a huge Roll Tide fan is Matty O, Matt Orham. Oh, yeah. Have you talked football with him or met him or played I, any rounds was, with him? Or I'm, We joked last shout week out to Matty we O. Griff on. We, we were like, we're on a Roll Tide theme for the next I, I, month. <coughs> so. actually, knew, I actually knew He's, his father better than I knew. I never really met Matty. Uh, I knew his, his father, who yeah. since passed away, uh, Jim. Was, yeah, he's Jim, coming to he's Jim coming to MCA. Matty He's so. been here a few times. That was like Looks four months ago. Yeah, not just semi recent. Yeah, semi recent. Uh, yeah, and that he, I think that merits a uh, mention because sure. Jim love Orem, to you, brother, and your family. Jim Orem was. Uh, I mean, Matty O is obviously a force to be reckoned with in disc golf, but especially southeastern disc golf. But Jim Orm was 
another pioneer. Oh, like, Mississippi went from zero courses to however many. He, I mean, he put, you know, I, I don't want to say a number, but I mean, they went from zero to however many they've got now, you know, because of because of him. Jim yeah. Warren, yeah, he was. Wow, I didn't know that. Oh, yeah. Jim, Warren, Jim Jim's a man. Jim's passing is, I mean, and we've had a, a couple huge ones. Yeah, recently. We had Old Man Wallace just a couple months before that, and then Jim passed. And I know Matt felt it hard, and uh, and I've always loved Matt. I think he's a, he's a great person. He's an amazing disc golfer, and I think I I hard I've always hard. felt like Matt had it in him to make a big run at the Pro Tour, and I feel like he was right. He was positioned perfectly to to do it, and then his dad got sick, and. And it's really unfortunate, but it's like, I mean, Matt's Matt's a huge competitor, and like, you know, I'm just sad about Jim being gone because, like, sure. dude, it's it's like, you know, any of you, you, like, the people that were here for the first courses going in in the South, it was like, that was the first place that opened up to Whammo and to Innova when they started. It was like, yes. Let's put courses in. It was like a big push for the southeast. It was state parks. It was let's put courses in, and and back to back to back to back to back. And Jim made a huge push in sure. Mississippi, and so um, yeah, rest in power to Jim Orem. Love to Matt and your whole family. Sure, and that, and to say this, roll the tide. little time I've and roll the little tide. little time I've spent around Matt and with Matt. He's a resilient guy. He's going to be back, and he'll and he'll he'll be right back he's there playing. again. He's playing he's, MCO. He's coming I, I did here. see that, yep. but he's his game is he's been playing for so long. His Dude, game's like a riding beast. a bike. He just gets out there and throws. He's a beast. Oh yeah, for sure. And by far, I would put him top ten to twenty in the world at any given time. I always look forward to seeing him compete against Dickerson because, like, I feel like he's Mississippi's great white hope. And <laughs> well, they both I mean? like, have very, very unique and distinctive styles. Yes. As well. Absolutely. Too. Yeah. And it's fun to watch them compete because they're both, yeah. it could be either one of them, you know, it could be, it yeah. could go to either one. That's, I've heard people give Matty O crap about his style too. And I'm like, bro, if I could throw as far as him with that style, I'd throw that style. Why are you giving him crap? He's throwing five. Everybody feet. does. Fun well, stuff, I mean, I man. guess I got something, yeah. feel, a, a, a certain way I feel about that. It's like, I, I like disc golf because, Everybody doesn't have to do it the same way. You know, I don't have to get out and throw fucking backhands every time. I can get out there and throw flick shots all day, mm-hmm. every day, and still compete with everybody. I don't have to putt the same way you do. I can throw tomahawks all day if I want to. You know, I can throw rollers all day if we I want to. We should make rules about that one, though. But it is what it is. You know, it's, that's what makes disc golf diff- um, like so unique is because everybody doesn't have to do it the same way. You're right. You know, I don't have to putt in a straight line like you. I can put hyzer all day. I can put and hyzer all day. You know, sure. if you I want to use my if I want to use my driver to put, I'll use my driver to put. That's what makes this sport so unique. You know, sure. you, you don't have to freaking like get out there and oh, he uses a putter to hopefully you know, only get a drive really for three hundred feet. So I have to use a putter. No, you can use your mid range. You can use your fairway driver. You can use your driver. You can do whatever you want. That's what makes disc golf so unique, and that's yeah. what makes it special. Is because I don't have to do it like you. I don't have to do it like you. I don't have to do it like him. I can do it my own way and get out there and have a great time and not have to worry about anything. And like sure. you know, nobody's gonna be like. Look at him. Yeah. I Why was, is he doing it like that? He I should w- just stop. Yeah, but let's go tell him to stop. Go home. No, no, no. That's what makes this golf unique, you know? Sure. I can I'll, give you some tips, but if you were, it's up to you if you want to take them or not because you can still do it your way and have a great time and not even, like, think about the tips that we're giving to you. Sure. And they're just there to help you along the way. Nobody's giving you, like, major game advice, typically. But to kind of argue that there is something to be said about walking up to a tee pad throwing a putter while everybody else throws a driver around you and you you park it and they are everywhere there's well, something to I be mean, said look about at that simon lazat gives you a little little feeling inside oh the he made 600 waves foot a few putter months shot. ago with his music city open from 2015 I saw that. t-shirt on his vlog yep I don't know if you guys remember the 2015 MCO. Yeah, it was the rainbow he started out at seven oaks and had a real hard time for a few holes and then he started throwing his putter at everything. Yeah, basically. He made Shelby and then he look won. like, <laughs> oh, my goodness. You know, what's the shot that's over the water that he threw a putter on and everybody else threw a driver on and he went like 400 and some odd feet? Waco? Like, it was like, yeah, yeah, yeah Waco. You know what I'm talking like, about? So uh, that was, no, it was epic. Like, it was 500. Was epic. It was and he's not throwing four, a putter it was on his shot. Five. Like, yeah. come on. 
That, that proves that beast. disc golf is unique. When you don't have to throw a driver, you can throw the slowest disc in your bag and still achieve but something a, that people are like, holy moly. A lesson. You know, making you think, like, wow. To be well, learned that's from a, throwing a, a far, good though, illustration too. of the difference between, you know, and this is always where, like, the bombers and the golfers. blocking communication between locals <coughs> and MCO staff, when, like, why certain decisions are being made and why we're going to the trouble of building a temp course and it's like the only way Simon Lazat can play seven Oaks is if he throws one putter the entire round. Like, so you know what I mean? Like there's, yes, I totally agree. Technicality, wooded sure. courses and open courses, distance and technicality and athletic endurance. And all of those things should be factors in competition for the top level of our sport. I would say fair technicality. Yes. Not not like, you know, yeah, uh, extensive, like arbitrary, man-made, man-made OB. And, sure. And every know. course has probably got a little bit, you know, here or there of some stuff. But most part. Like, I'm really glad that the, the pro field is going to be playing at Cedar Hill for three days sure. this year. Like, it was a miraculous opportunity to do that. Mm-hmm. Because people are going to finally get to see exactly what it looks like when the best disc golfers in the world play the hardest yeah. layout possible at Cedar Hill. And I'm like, gonna, I'm going to go out on the, and say I'm thankful that COVID is happening this year for MCO because we don't have to deal with spectators at Cedar Hill. Yeah, and that's something that golfers don't always take into account when trying to figure out where to put a pro level course. With pros comes media, comes extra things. Well, you've got to have thing. cameras. You, and you have to have space. And if you have a thousand people following lead card, exactly. there are very few places for a camera to, to, to be placed. Sure. I mean, like, you're just jockeying for, for shoulder space. And when you get in the higher tier events, there's standards for that, making sure that things are taken care of before it happens. And now, like, that's the way this My ultimate go vision for the Music grow. City Open, as far as the NT goes, mm-hmm. would be to have two rounds at Cedar Hill, two rounds at a bomber course. Alternate. Whether, whether that's a, a, a temp course or we have one in the ground by then that we have invested in. Like, that's, you know, a four-round event. But the whole reason of not cycling them through all the courses is because... The pros have all unanimously agreed. If if it's a three round tournament, we want to play one course. If it's a four round tournament, two is fine. I know we've talked about it, but I'm not sure I've got 100 percent of your take. How do you? I want the rounds to be alternated, where you you start basically. I on think, a, it, I on think one that one makes the most the sense. Other. I think that makes the most sense. You sure. start them out at the bomber course. Move them into the shorter course. Well, then, no, you start on technical bomber, technical yeah, finish, technical finish bomber, bomber. Te- yeah. Okay, so after the third round, do a cut for the top forty yep. percent, and then finish plus on the spectator friendly, and finish course. on the spectator friendly bomber course. Exactly. I think and that I, should be a standard. So, and I think probably the MCO is going to be big enough to where it's, it's going to warrant it in the future. I mean, we may have to like some places they have to split FPO and MPO, like. We're right on that borderline of how many people we can have yeah. in. So if we do that alternate, then we probably would have to split well, look at all the and hoops change we're the... jumping through right now just to get people off the wait list for right. MCO 2020, right. so and it's, it's an A tier. What's crazy is COVID's aftermath we're for disc golf there, will be buddy. felt. We got to get Marcus all Rogers off the wait list. All folks. Make sure. That's Nate your Perkins, own fault. He's on the wait Keith list for MCO, so we got to get Reed this. Frescura. You guys can uh, all. Zach was telling me about that this morning. If they just we got to get Marcus Rogers. I'll be fine. You're lucky he's behind you. But. How old are you? 38. 38. Yeah. Oh, you're on the verge. <laughs> when was your when, was your, when was your first I'm MCO, itching. Fresh? When did you first play the Music City Open? I don't know. The first Music City Open. Yeah. I yeah, was there. I'll find it. What, what year was it? I'll find I think it. that was 10. The first one? I didn't realize it was only well, 2010. It used to be the Nashville Open. There was the that. Nashville Open, and then there was, you know, the, the Vapor, Flying Disc Championships. The Vapor Trail. Well, I mean, there's a, we've always had the Music City. We always had the uh, state tournament, but then yeah, we yeah. always had the... So when did the state tournament leave here and go to Morristown? No, the state tournament here it became that when we had the state tournament every year it was be, we had the overall it was all the all the different frisbee activities. Oh, okay. So now I think the agreement is that you have to have won a Tennessee state championship in order to run 
a Tennessee State championship? Like, really? that's what HBO Say that three indicated. times fast. 95. Like, Nash for open. H- when we had HB on the show, he said he was like, there's you a, can yeah, only be the TD of the Tennessee State championship if you've won it. That's he, what he said. And he has won it. Yeah, and he's won it oh, a yeah. couple times. A couple, yeah. Really? Oh. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Hmm. So, Damn. so what happens if nobody from the state wins it for a while? Well, let's let's give credit where credits due because HB. There's a lot of people. Pity. There's a lot of people with a lot of opinions about HB, and um, and I've been one of them, and I have spoken about my opinions about stuff HB has done extensively. But I I, I like HB. He's my he's, friend, and he's also another person that I respect the shit out of because. Yeah. He's one of those people that have put in work since yeah. before I was ever even thinking about being around. And I've been chasing down Ken Folger's record for the 20, uh, 2001 Am Worlds as the biggest tournament in Tennessee history for a long time. And I've gotten close. Now, it was like uh, HB got it with the Tennessee States this year because he went over the 426. Because I had gotten over like 411 for MCO 2019, and then we had drops and it dropped down a little bit. But HB got like 400, like high 400s or something like that for Tennessee States this year. But we're almost at 600 players, and he Open. went to the government and got so, literal approval. Yeah, we work with that. Play yeah, me and Rod Norton and HB Clark were like really trying to scramble and get like get our ducks in a row for getting PDGA sanctioning returned to us in Tennessee. And t- and HB was the one that ended up getting the whole thing secured. And about the whole HB thing, say what you will, but disc golf would not be what it is in the southeast without HB. Oh, really? The end like of story. anywhere on the eastern, yeah. like half of the United States. So, I mean. Bowling Green doesn't exist without HB, basically, almost, the way it is now. Well, there's a lot of people involved there. You got sure, Dr. Sure, Dr. But- Dr. Rick and... Uh, Rick and Sylvia, and you know, all, there's a lot. Bowling of Green there. is a is a mecca from way back, but, but he's been a very instrumental for what disc golf has been here in the southeast. As but far I, as courses, I, I just feel like me and HB have bad. like a playful rivalry where I'm like, I think Marcus we're, we're and gonna HB one up each other rivalry. every year. He's like, I'm gonna be like, I'm gonna get 470. He's like, he's like, I'm gonna get 480 players, and I'm like, I'm gonna get 580 <laughs> players. And he's like, but, I'm gonna get 680 players. And I'm like, you know, it's 700. <laughs> this is just me, and it this may not be factual at all, but it seems to me Probably that not. HB's maybe slowing down a little bit nowadays. I know he's had a few knee surgeries. No, and- uh, he's not slowing down. It's, uh, he's man, anytime you're doing something in disc golf and making money from it, it's an issue. You're going to get torn apart, especially in the age of social media. And, Here's and that's the deal. something what to talk you- about too, is because like, I feel like if you have an idea like and you have a unique business model and and you, and you want to provide a good or service that's not currently being provided sure jump in there like run your business make a living everybody like we're at a point in disc capitalism golf where if you have a good idea you should be able to make a living off of it sure like everybody should if be allowed if you can if you put the yeah. work in to make that living off of it but look and, how many companies come and, and he's go done in disc it, golf. but he's constantly followed by people that hate on him just for the simple fact that he's making money because like, it appeals to the the majority right now that you're grassroots and you're not making money but you want to see disc golf grow guess what bro corporate's coming dude there are there is disc golf existing in so many small towns Look across at Europe. the midwest and the southeast that would like disc golf would not exist there if it wasn't for hb clark sure and that that's an indisputable fact no. like you but know, we talk about making money. Look at Europe. You they're can making, criticize they're what, making you money can everywhere criticize in Europe. His decision. You can criticize his design. He's he's done the work. He's put the stuff in the ground. There there is disc golf in places because he did what he did. Sure. And shout out and golf snaps to HB. And uh, you know, and hey, if you can turn sure something people, you love doing and something that that you are are you can do and make money at it, then hey. Well, more power to you, bro. Yeah, so it's just America. This is what the country is founded upon. It's the basic principles, like you do for yourself to provide for you and yours. But you know, like, but we got to say this: as disc golf becomes an industry and it becomes sure. a business, and we start to grow it, and we start to 
invest in getting more eyes on it and, and involving more people in it. What we kind of touched on at the beginning of the episode was that, like, for me, it has to remain grassroots. Like, it has mm. to remain... It has to... Like, one of the most amazing things about disc golf is that it's all things to all people. I don't think you'll and ever And it has to, to that. stay that way. It, like, you have to be able to enjoy it and access it on any level that's comfortable for you. Sure. It's like, already split. It's just going to be a little bit bigger split because it'll well, always still be uh, that. A lot of people think that it has to either grow legitimately in the mainstream or stay secret. It can go and both stay, ways. And I think that it... I think you can do both. I think, like... I think there's a way to keep it accessible for everybody. Here's the deal: Why are we trying to keep it a secret? Like, why does the why does the the grassroots movement want to keep it a secret? They're the fun, the grassroots movement. Let's be a, a big percentage is like the the love, past love, spread love. Everybody's welcome. So why not? You know, why can't it grow on both sides? That well, uh, okay. Because it appeals to two different types of people. Here's something that uh, Brian Earhart does on his podcast with his guests that I'm going to do with fresh lefty gravy. So there is a utopian future for disc golf and a dystopian future for do disc golf. Do you know golf. what these words are? <laughs> I have. He to. is from I Alabama. Have, hey, I'm allowed. That's I've the gotten, last Alabama joke that'll, that'll be allowed the on the podcast. You're also banned from Eggland. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> oh, taking my car Bye. away. It's about time. I, I'm surprised I hadn't been banned. I hadn't been in forever. <laughs> You know, like you're you're in a unique position because, like, you kind of you're you're spreading, you're straddling, like the middle ground because you're still a fairly young man and you're competing at a fairly high level, but you were around all those greats that now are like you know, like Barry Gill is the bionic man. He can't <laughs> throw without like a huge apparatus on his shoulder. So and like, and having to go back to his bag for that right. I don't like the word fairly there. He's a pretty youthful man, and he's damn good disc golf. Well, no, I'm saying you're straddling this generational transition. Well, let's let's talk about a big eel first for all those out there that all don't right. know what a big eel is. Yeah, a big eel is not a, a miraculous fish. creature, and if you ever encounter one in nature, you should try to capture it safely, keep it alive. We want to study it and replicate it if we hopefully can. Here's what a big eel is. You go up to your shot, you look at it, and you go back to your bag and get a diff- different disc, that's one big ill. <laughs> one big ill. One big ill. <laughs> you can do it multiple times, but it's those are, those are big ills. Nice. There you go, big ill. Are those noted on the scorecard? I believe you have to draw a triangle with dots. <laughs> okay. Almost like a crop circle. Very, very, very true. They're very elusive and rare. Random question. How did you feel when they introduced uh, ratings? I like it. Do you think, think they're that fair? I noticed it. Like, I think it was like 2001. I, you got me. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I, I'm, I'm literally like, <laughs> thank you for coming in so I can look at this. And I looked History. around. I'm like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you said it, not me, right? <laughs> and it looks like in 2001 was the first time I saw that they started doing ratings. You know, I don't know if that's when they started doing it or if they went back and retroactively did that or not. I, you know, I, yeah, I don't yeah. know. I don't know, but I, but I love the ratings. I think it's I think it's great. Yeah. I think the ratings are good if you have a pro division and an am division. And if you're not this rating, you can't play pro no matter what level of it is. No, 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 that's no, the no, way. No, I, no, 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 no. I think no, that's how. About, the, I think that. No, you if you're going to do that. I'm saying like your, your rating during a round, not your. Not your overall, like, your rating. Your, your uh, the, round rated? Yeah. Or they, your, the round started, you shot, it's rating, rather? Right, right, right. Okay. Yeah, like, your first round, second round, third round rating. Okay. Not your overall rating. Just as, like, a course rating for your... No, you're... Okay, let's say you play in the Music City Open, and your first round was a 10,001 rated round. Damn. 10,000? Jesus. Whatever it is, yeah. 1,000. I'm Paul Macbeth <laughs> Wysocki. Yeah. Nico. You know, whatever it is, you know. <laughs> it seems like it was uh, first started in 2001. You know, before oh, they used got, to have hey, ratings, you yeah, yeah, you were still have, rated player, round ratings, but like round ratings. Like, Is that when they just started putting them up? Yeah, that's what I was saying. Because like not long ago, they started putting up like career wins and all that stuff because that wasn't on there before. So it was just like an update. Because like they would, how would you get a rating without a round rating before that? Exactly. That's why, and that's why, and that's why I brought that up. So I'm like, 
Well, 2001, the internet these, these finally got away from Nala. There weren't any ratings on it. I'm like, huh, they didn't show ratings when I was back then. And I was like, keep looking, I keep looking, I keep looking. So in 2001, it's, it's I bet a lot of people doing, were like, happy about that. <laughs> I don't have to look at I'm it. I'm asking one right now. <laughs> well, I didn't. I didn't start my first one until like 20, uh, 2009 or something. Why like are you that. asking him? He didn't use a computer back then. He did, he barely uses his phone now. <laughs> what's this? What's this? I'm gonna be in so much trouble next time we play. I know, right? You already can't go back to. It's the only time I can talk shit and get away with it because he beats me all the time. No, I remember we we were introducing the digital scorecard at Cane Ridge Open last year, yes, 2019. Yes, yes. And you're like, man, I can't hold my phone around with you. Here you go. Will you do it for me? <laughs> but then you're like, hey, that was actually pretty easy. <laughs> after after two rounds, and you're like, hey, oh, yeah, that wasn't bad. Easy. It's a yeah. it's a great innovation for people that. What we're trying to do like is like not force it on people, but get people to understand that this is where it's going to be in the next three to five years. PDGA, everything is going to go digital. Oh yeah, and it's so much easier on the Super staff. Gross. God, you have no idea how much easier it is on the staff. I and doing tee times, I never want to go to a shotgun start again. That, that, if I never see a board, a three-fold board again, I'll be happy. Well, that's been the funny thing is like since we've started the whole COVID procedures mm-hmm. this year. This guy's got it's so all much the stuff that we've wanted to change about our events to make them mm-hmm. run smoother and run better for years, but it would blow everybody's minds. And they we would did it all us. at once. Well, we have something to blame it on now. Yeah, <laughs> and everybody's playing the events and coming back to us and going, "Man, this is the best it's ever been." We should well, never everybody's loving it. Sure, this year bag tags. They can make requests. I want to start early, even though I'm an MPO. I want to play late because I got a plane. I just got in. You yeah, know, that, that stuff's all kinds quit. of stuff. Like we're. You know. I'm just kidding. That's on Hoy. That's all. Well, Jay, him. you're He's one of the, the one, one who of, does it. Jay, so like, Jay, I'm just trying to help you. Jay, out, you're bro. one of the people that has requests. So yeah, I know last, that. Literally, that's last why I said event. it's got to it's got to be stopped. <laughs> You've got. I be should stopped. be the only one allowed to do so. <laughs> Actually, everybody requests always to play with uh, Farm Fresh, and right? I always play with you and Marcus. So my request is is in the MP40 division. Thing. It's like. Farm Fresh, there's like about seven requests to play. Oh, I'm like, we gotta have a gosh. card of four. <laughs> Throw me in the mix with their like, card on. <laughs> yeah, good yeah, luck. Exactly. Good luck. White you House are, coming up. This hey, by the way, White card. House. It e cost him a beer per man e to me, e bro. E8. E8 at White House this Sunday. Registration is live on Disc Golf Scene. Go get oh. signed up. Yeah. Is the course ready? Oh, I bet it is. Course so. being ready, Bob. <laughs> I don't I mean, worry about it because I. I we trust should change it up and play the kids' course. The most course. And see what everybody can do. I bet somebody. I want to hear about if you've been out to like disc golf road trip or played any big tournaments outside of this Nashville. One? Like, what are some of the memorable which one? tournaments or road trips you've been on for disc golf? Um, you've been doing that. Fly some courses, trip like with, yeah, you've yeah. been to Flyboy. Um, what's the Flyboy? Oh my. Excuse me. Let me get out of the way so you can it's absorb a all this. Private course and. Is it? It's uh, west of west of Atlanta. Yeah. It's one of the one of the co-owners of Prodigy. It's a it's a it's a private community. Well, I don't know if it's a private community. It's, it's one of those communities where everybody has an airplane and a hangar. So you can't lift that. So, so it's, and it's spectacular. Okay. We can't lift that. But what's you Pro- the, on the, road the, trips with them? Disc golf or what? That's that was a, that's one of the road trips I've been on to. They I have want to hear more now. You got me intrigued. I want to hear more now. You've got me intrigued I'm about trying, this flyboy. I'm trying boy. to. You're making <clears throat> commentary back here. I'm trying to let the man speak. I'm, I'm just. I'm just trying to do good TV. <laughs> I don't know good. what to do with. I don't know what to do with my mouth. Let's go. <laughs> yeah, I do that. <laughs> oh. I do it. Do it. There you go. All right. <laughs> Enough of this shenanigans. <clears throat> but the best road trip. Best road trip was uh was to Tahoe. That was the that's the, that's the pinnacle of my disc golf adventures is to a buddy of mine michael burnham used to live in reno we'd fly out to tie out, fly out there and played the <clears throat> king of the lake it was a four course tournament around tahoe and uh that was those those are some pretty courses out there i think they still know. have that yes Do well I, th- I don't think the king of the lake still exists but there's still tournaments there but the king of the lake tournament i don't it seems like the last year. I just remember hearing about that on the podcast recently. Okay, um, maybe it's maybe it's back. But I think the, it's back. so. It's multiple courses in that one park, I guess. Or no, it's King of the Lake. You play okay, around, so massive. You play course. around the lake. You play around Lake Tahoe. Eighteen holes. Survival challenge. Some courses are more than eighteen. Uh, how many courses you said? Four. Or five? Four courses. Jesus. Oh yeah, yeah. One yeah. spot. Lake Tahoe is not small. That's nice. 
Well, I mean, Tahoe's a huge lake. And you're <laughs> when I, when you say, that's an epic. That's an epic. For some reason, when like, you say, I get three throws say around Tahoe, this. I think it's skiing for some reason. I don't know why that is. Oh, it's because it's, it is skiing. It's, There's skiing yeah, there, too. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. The, the, when the, you say lake and then skiing, it doesn't You're talking about like Jay near Nysat. Reno. There was a Winter Olympics there. Flacco. Mm-hmm. Some year. So, that Thanks, Sean. <laughs> if there was a Winter Olympics there, it's kind of big. Probably. Oh, no, well, man. I gotta be real with you, bro. I grew up in Arkansas. There's not a lot of snow there, so I don't know a lot about winter sports. I've been skiing once at Paoli Peaks, and I don't really call that skiing. It was like a hill. Get that fake snow. Yeah, well, it was fake snow, and then one night it actually like sleeted, so the whole all the fake snow just had a layer of ice on it, and we were like, let's go on the midnight ski. That was real fun. We lasted about two runs. No, any injuries, but oh, actually, not us. My stepdad did something to his knee, but he injures himself walking through the house so i mean i love Man. him to death but he's accident Fire. prone like you wouldn't believe cold good thing he doesn't listen to this podcast <laughs> dude the f- the first time i played basketball in high school here was just a, a pickup game with the new school i was going to in the summertime and my stepdad he wanted to play so bad and he rolls out there with his 84 Reeboks, bro like laces them up gets out there <laughs> Goes up for a rebound and blows his ACL for like 30 seconds oh, into God. play. <laughs> I was like, oh, oh, well, it's fun while it lasted. Thank yeah, you. No he's he's a bit on the play, You got to stretch, okay? Side. You got to yeah. stretch it out. Stretch it out. <laughs> uh, yeah. Stretch it out. <laughs> Poor guy. All right. Dude, Fresh, this has been a pleasure. Wait, Is there anything you would fun. like to leave the audience with? Uh, ben Northcutt. Yeah. Ben Northcutt. Yeah. Yeah. Good call. Ben Shall we get into a little more like shall we i don't know anything you whatever want you want to say about that specifically yeah. about ben i Just, mean like I, the legacy of ben is that he was always the one that showed up to work not to play and people rallied around him and the reason that we have the structure that we have for our disc golf society in nashville that we do where we have a big club that runs a bunch of events and raises money. And at the end of the year, we provide money for big course projects is because we have course captains at each course that have a crew around them. They lead by example. They bring people in. They work on the course, upkeep it, maintain maintain it. And then if there's something that's a big project that's going to pull away from their upkeep, they come to the club. And we provide the funds, we provide the manpower, we call it work day, we make it happen. The reason all that works the way it does is because of people like Ben Northcutt, who showed up and everybody wanted to play with them and hang out with them. And they were like, no, I'm doing work. Here we go. That is, in essence, that's why why we have a Mike McDaniel. That's why we have a Lance Kirby. That's why we have a Billy motherfucking Fowler. A Billy motherfucking Fowler. And and all the guys at Cane Ridge. There's so many of you guys. I don't want to start dropping names because I know we'll leave out somebody. Lonnie Nelson, Robert Zavala, Jeremy Johnson, Jay Watson, um, Mike Usung, Shannon Napier, Chris Usung. Shannon Napier has done a lot at White House. Um, I mean, you guys. There's a, the this is the legacy list. that you have to live up to. Is it, it? You know, you're not. Yes, disc golf is awesome. It's amazing. It's gonna. It's life changing, and it's gonna change your life. Give a little back for everything you take out of it. Give ten percent back. Biblical principle, like here, tithing. If you get ten percent of the value that you take away from disc golf and you put it back into it, carry a trash bag during sure. your round. Leave it better than you found Leave it. Leave it better than you found it. Heck it but to go back, out. I don't want to interrupt your clothes, but to kind of just go back to what you're talking about, the club. In essence, that's why the I don't club want to it. interrupt your clothes, but I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it anyway. Well, do it. I mean, it happens. You know, fair is fair and podcasting and war. Where were you up until now? Now, all of a sudden, I'm wrapping I'm, it up, and you're like, oh, I got something to no, say. No, because you, <laughs> you made a good point, but I feel like that point should be added to so people know that like the club isn't just here to run events. Like That's, in essence, why the club is here, to support the community. And like the club has nowhere enough manpower to be at every course at all times, so we sure. rely on that. So like for people who think the club is just there running events or bag tags, that's, in essence – a part of it, but it's not the reason why we're there. Yeah, that's that was all. Make, that was all. That's where we Sorry. make the money that we put back into it. I just felt like yeah. that should no, be. No, it's good. It's good. Well, thank you for that. For instance, uh, 
back when K Man was running running events at uh, Naval, he put out a he put out a call on Facebook for need 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 some folks to show up and weed eat. So I show up out there in the morning. It's me, Mikey, and Griff. We're like, what? <laughs> he <know>? said people. <laughs> you know, you would think you know this was on this was on the Facebook. So there's you know the book of faces. Everybody saw it. And yep. You get out there and it's. The, the, uh, the same guys. The Shelby's two. like average number of golfers that play it weekly has grown a lot since then, though, too, because we've gotten emails from people talking about Shelby and yeah, there's a there's a, a new core group there, yeah, but plays there. I mean, uh, but the point of my story is that you know we get there and it's just and we're expected to, to well, no, do it's, everything. It's, no, it's I don't, you know I don't care. I'll, I'm I'm there. I'm going to work. I'm you know, I'm yeah. I'm going to do what I'm going to do. But I get there and it's it's Griff and Mike. Yeah. You know. But and, and you know this this call went out to everybody. So were you uh, surprised to see anybody there? Were you thinking it was just going to be you? No, or, no, I, I knew somebody would be there. Oh, okay. But I mean, you know, you you'd think with there would be sure. somebody new. But I guess that's that's just what. Uh, it, well, and to wrap it up, man. I mean, like the people that do the work get burnt out. Sure. And it's offensive at a certain point when you're the only person that shows up every time there's a need and it's the same five yeah. to ten people. Well, I, I, mean, it's, it's almost like, I used to be like that. I used to keep track of who showed up when. And, yeah. I mean, but now I just I go do my thing and then I was ready to play. When I have time to play golf, I play golf. I don't – because you can't worry about what other people It's do. a waste of time. You can, you can try to influence people. You can try to, to say, you know, tell people, like, you know, disc golf ain't free. But if, if they're not going to do it, they're not going to do it. Yeah. So – you just got to lead by example. But if you know if you're listening to the sound of our voices and you live in Nashville and you're new to disc golf and you ha- you've never picked up a stick, pick up a stick. Yeah, I mean that's the the main reason for this whole thing is because we have so many new players, so many new members, and this is the best time to tell them, hey, please give as much. Not even as much. Just give a little bit back for everything you take away from disc golf. Just give a little bit back. And there's ways that you can find out how to help. Like, message Music City Disc Golf. We will tell you where to go. That's a novel thought. Yeah. Or me, personally. Or whatever. Sure. (sighs) If you see us at an event and you see us on Facebook, message us. Watch Telly's video on YouTube. What? Telly's got a video? How to add forehand distance. Oh, dude. He's a boss. So, I'll watch that. Watch it. More than once, probably. Everybody out there, watch it. It's good. It's good. If you want to throw a pig, four hundred. <laughs> yep, has, that's how you do uh, it. Has a lot to do with a weed eater and a lopper, and uh, anyway, kind of like that Paul Uliberry. No, <laughs> um, fresh. <laughs> fresh. I've got a, I've got a new, new I've got a new. It's nickname. called the Uliberry. Segway. Yes, like Segway it. J Skinner. I like Should I go get one too? Should I get like a Segway? Yes, you need a Segway. They make a Segway scooter now. It's got big the tires. old school one. Wow, you Segwaying big... on a Segway? Yeah, oh my god, <laughs> dude, those things are super expensive. Dude, like this was so much fun. People think you're old. I'd rather get a hover around. <laughs> At least I could be seated. And a jitterbug phone. At least I could be seated. With the giant buttons. <laughs> yeah, the flips. That's the way to end the episode on the hover round. <laughs> Here or, we go. or rascal. It doesn't have to be brand new. You're a rascal. <laughs> that, We're in trouble. We're about to be canceled know, right? by the senior community. Bye, guys. Those we love you guys, too. Um, Fresh, thank you. My pleasure. My pleasure. This was a lot Woo! of fun, man. Fun. Yeah, you we need had, to come back sometime, for sure. Yeah, you have an open invitation. If you ever just decide on a Monday, I feel like talking some shit. <laughs> yeah. Just hit me up. Let, we'll or just show here. up. Yeah, we, you might have to share a microphone with Timeout Trey Batson. What? He doesn't, <laughs> wait, 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 wait. When does he? He doesn't get mic. No, mm. I mean, even we when we get a, upgraded, he well, doesn't. We get do a have mic. a lapel mic, and uh, we're about to get a bigger interface. Yeah, and some more mics. Let's just and not offer guess. that to him, so he just All assumes the everything's the same. Well, we we could pretend like that he could that Trey could use. We the should mic. give him a mic that's not plugged in. Oh. Kind of like how you give kids. See what like happens. You're playing, you're playing a video game. Mm-hmm. Give you're them the controller, the other like, controller. Oh, yeah, batteries. yeah. Look, look, look. That's the move. Here's controller for you. That's the move. You're welcome. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Thank you. Jay finally contributed. Well, it's about to <laughs> Finally? <laughs> I would like to go back through the episodes and count how many times he said that. So then we know really how many times. <laughs> it's at least two. It's at I know that's two. at least two. <laughs> it's at least two. Maybe even a half three. in there somewhere. All right. You know, I love you, though. Of course. Of course. <laughs>
Deuces. All right. Nashville world, we love you. Thanks for tuning in. And in closing, on behalf of Marcus, Dr. Hoy, Jay, and my good friend Farm Fresh, never tie for last cash. Peace. Let the bass kick.